12.50 a.m. and 105.5 FM. Today's game also being brought to you by Parkview Sports Medicine. A winning combination with amateur sports. Snap to whistle. A profile of success by St. Francis coach Kevin Donnelly. Available now. Shelter insurance. Ranked highest in customer satisfaction. Current mechanical. Delivering value through quality and performance. Kurtz Mio Concrete Solutions. The right company for the right job. By Public Service Credit Union. Serving Allen County for 90 years. Northwestern Mutual Life. Your local agent is Lanson Myers. By Game One, the number one name in sports equipment. Glenbrook Dodge. Your number one source for Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep in Fort Wayne. And by Blue Jacket Incorporated. Providing training for those facing employment barriers. Now, let's head on out to the stadium and join Joe Parson. Two uh, nice wins, big wins to start the year, followed by a pair of troubling losses. Then last week in Michigan, a 53-0 shutout victory over Madonna University. So who shows up Who shows up today for the Silver and Blue against arch-rival Marion University? Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Parson, joined by Bill Scott. We're at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Glad you could join us here today. Beautiful uh, sunshine right now in evidence uh, here on the west side of Fort Wayne. Very important game for St. Francis at Darcy Stadium, and you could say the same as well for the, uh, the Knights of Marion University. Cougars against the Knights both have a loss in Mideast League play and can't afford a second loss. Marion was surprised at home last Saturday by Indiana Wesleyan 17-10 which, uh, while USF thrived in Livonia, Michigan, over Madonna, 53 nothing. But St. Francis also has two losses overall and probably needs to win out to stay in cont contention for possible postseason play uh, bid. St. Francis tries to break a four-game losing streak to the Knights. Can it happen today? Well, we'll find out as the day wears on. We'll also see what's on the mind of Coach Kevin Downey when we return with our Momper Insulation pregame show. 48 degrees, sunny skies, winds out of the west-southwest, 11 miles an hour. Temperature should get up into the low mid 50s, possibly. Great day for college football. This is college football on WGL News Radio 1250 105.5. FM. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart Virtual Walk-In Clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260-266-4006 for more. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. In Northeast Indiana, contact Brandon Scott Shelter Insurance at 342 Enterprise Drive, Warsaw, Indiana, or call 574-376-4448. Learning to manage your finances? Maybe not a lot of fun, but what if you actually got paid to learn? Public Service Credit Union is partnered with Zogo, the gamified financial literacy app that lets you earn while you learn. With real-life rewards like gift cards to your favorite stores, bite-sized modules tackle topics like saving for retirement, buying a car, even opening a checking account, lessons that are fun for students and even parents. Get started by downloading the Zogo app. Use access code MYPSCU. Finally, it pays to learn about finances thanks to Public Service Credit Union. This time of year, everyone is thinking football. And now there's a special opportunity to grab a copy of Fort Wayne's legendary coach, Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. At the University of St. Francis, Coach D's Cougars captured back-to-back -back national championships in 2016 and 2017. His new book reveals over 40 years of coaching trials and tribulations, as well as the ability to overcome personal adversity and challenges. Snap the Whistle, a perfect gift idea if you're truly a football fan. Get a personally autographed 
copy in the USF football office. Also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. Time now for the Mumper Insulation pregame show, where quality and family always come first. We're back with Kevin Downey. You know, we've seen a lot of things in 25 years of Cougar football. We've seen exciting games, close games, heartbreak, ec- ecstatic wins, national championships. Last week in Livonia, Michigan, I can't remember a game where we've scored in so many different fashions. And early on, I mean, block punt for a touchdown, block field goal return, 96 yards for a touchdown. You know, I made the remark, Coach, that uh, we, we scored in almost every conceivable way. The only thing we didn't have was a pick six interception and maybe a two-point conversion. But that, those things with the blocks, they don't happen by accident. I know your coaches, you scheme, you look on film for certain opportunities. Talk about the preparation last week for Madonna and how it paid off big dividends. Well, we, we are committed to special teams. I mean, we practice in 30 minutes every day, and we work on blocks. Obviously, we've had to correct some things on field goal block and pump block. We want to make sure that we're getting everybody handled. But we, we work hard. Uh, Joey Didier and, and Steve Wilt are running the show there on, uh, on special teams, and they've done a great job. It's a, a big, big improvement. Now, I'll tell you, that win was tonic for what – did or did not ail the Cougars coming into this two-game stretch. It's going to be critical uh, starting today with Marion. They got beat last week at home. Talk talk about the Marion Knights. They've beaten St. Francis now four straight times. How does that have to turn around today? What What is it going to take? Thanks for reminding me of that, Joe. <laughs> I'm good at that. Well, you know, that there's uh, this is a game of inches and a play or two. Uh, then, you, you know, your, your question about the last time we won was 2017. Uh, you know, we've gone through a lot of things programmatically that most of the competition has not had to do. We're on the way back. We're slugging away. Uh, we've got some uh, kids that are nitty gritty and we're teaching them how to handle the ups and downs, you know, to play with grit and toughness when things aren't going well, sticking together, handling the successes with humility because you got got to ride the, the highs and lows of the, every game, every season, and uh, that's what you want to teach kids. That's our mission here is resiliency and toughness and dealing with all the things. Um, you know, this is a, a game day, two programs that are of tradition. We've built ours over 25 years now. Yeah, we've had a hiccup here and there. Um, they started back, I think, in 06. So, you know, they they did it quick. Ted Karras was a coach there at that time. He's with us now. And he did it in six years. So, obviously, they've got a institutional commitment. They're in a great location. They're going to get transfers. So, uh, you know, they got a great setup. And... Uh, I still think Fort Wayne is the best college football in town. We get good kids here. Um, you know, it's going to be a great game today. Um, I expect it to be a physical slugfest, and I think our kids are going to get after it. It's going to be an exciting day. I know health has been an issue, especially on the offensive line. Any updates? Are we getting healthier? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. I mean, we, our, our tackles right now have been banged up with shoulders and knees and that sort of thing. Um, some of our receiving core is a little gimpy right now. We're, we're relatively healthy on defense. Uh, and with special teams, we've got a great kicker and, and punter and Jack James. Um, you know, we've got to take care of the football. Cam Peterson's got to have a, a great day. we got to keep Simmons upright. And, and uh, make some plays there as well. Best of luck today. Thanks, Joe. Lemberg Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram knows that sometimes it just makes more sense to buy used. Every purchase is different. Every buyer has a specific need. 
But that doesn't mean you have to settle for a poor, depleted selection of vehicles on some shady corner lot. There's no need to get frustrated driving from dealership to dealership, confronted by hard sell lot Larry's trying to hustle you into a bad deal on a high mileage vehicle. That's because Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram has a massive selection of factory backed certified pre owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs, and a finance approval plan to get you into the vehicle you want. Credit issues, divorce, bankruptcy? No worries. We've got the banks, we've got the loan officers, we've got the financing. Don't run all over town. Just run on down to Coliseum under the giant American flag. You can still have a big dealership experience even when buying a pre-owned ride at Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Always online at glenbrookdodge.com. Here's a great Christmas gift-giving idea for that special man of the house in your life. Give him a copy of legendary coach Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. Kevin Donnelly has built a prolific college coaching career in Fort Wayne, winning back-to-back -back national football championships here at the University of St. Francis. But it hasn't always been an easy ride. Follow the trials and tribulations of Coach D's 40-plus years of college coaching, the ups as well as the downs, and examples of perseverance and triumphing over adversity. More importantly, with his guidance, how boys wanting to play winning football also became responsible men contributing to their communities. Snap to Whistle provides laughs, some tears, and great life examples sure to entertain any man. Get your copy of Snap to Whistle today, and when you buy in the Cougar football office, Coach D will also personally autograph your very own copy. Snap to Whistle, also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. WGL is fully invested in broadcasting amateur sports in Fort Wayne. That includes both high school football on Friday nights and now University of St. Francis Cougar football. So we've got you covered in Fort Wayne both Friday and Saturdays. And best of all, when you or your family are out of the listening area, you can still listen live on the World Wide Web at www.wgl1250.com. If you like your local football, keep in touch. Home or away, right here on WGL News Radio 1250, 105.5 FM. Welcome back, everybody, with Bill Scott. I'm Joe Parson. Greg Santelli, our referee. It looks like Mary and uh, Bill, if you saw it, it looks like they've won the toss deferred. Is that what you're seeing? That's what I see there, Joe. Anyway, it'll be Marion defending the goal, the north goal to our left. St. Francis to our right, 48 degrees, sunny skies, winds out of the west, southwest, 11 miles an hour. We're back with kickoff right after this from Opera Insurance. Insulation. Everyone knows that winter is coming, and when it does come, it's the wind and cold air that really chill your home. Mopper Insulation can keep the cold out by sealing the leakage points and filling empty sidewalls, even through masonry or siding, without unsightly holes or blemishes. They're also experts at insulating crawl spaces, attics, and any place the cold could get in and ruin your winter. Let Mopper seal your house, saving you 30 to 50% off your heating bill. Call today for a free energy audit before it's too late. Mopper Insulation. When the furnace or air conditioning goes out, it's not on your schedule or even a repair company's schedule. There is one name in heating and cooling that will make you a part of their schedule. Current Mechanical. Current Mechanical handles all heating, cooling, water heater, filter system, and geothermal needs, including replacements, repairs, and maintenance. With over 35 years in the heating and cooling business, Current Mechanical's response time is one of the best in the Fort Wayne area. Call Current Mechanical 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 420-8138. Current Mechanical. Keep it current. All of us can use some help from time to time. That's why Blue Jacket supports men and women in the Fort Wayne area through employment and training. Also, those who may have the cards stacked against them from the homelessness, addiction and disability, a felony, even long-term unemployment. All can be overcome through Blue Jacket intervention. Blue Jacket even hires certain clients at its own enterprises, such as their high-end theft store, cleaning service, staffing service, and highly popular holiday event fantasy of lights blue jacket stands ready to help those in need 
Playing competitive football in Fort Wayne requires focus, determination, teamwork, and buying into a system. That worked well for Brian Kurtz and Matt Milhouse when they played together at Bishop Bloors and again at the University of St. Francis. And now those two stalwart athletes continue to display those winning characteristics learned on the gridiron at their new business, Kurtz Mio Concrete Solutions. These days, it's less about football and more about finding the most cost-effective concrete and power washing solutions to meet your needs. Join the winning team at KurtzMio.com. You're listening to USF Football on WGO. News Radio 1250 and 105.5. Cougars will kick it away from right to left as we look at it. Back uh, deep for the Marion Knights. Uh, they'll receive inside their 10-yard line. And Jack James with that strong leg, uh, Bill Scott, will try to give it all he can get and try to get it across the end line. Big day in the MSFA today. Concordia playing at Taylor number 5. Indiana Wesleyan now. Uh, they're on the road in Michigan to take on Lawrence Tech. Madonna back home again against Siena Heights. The Midwest League, there's three teams now at 2-0. and Number 16, St. X, they're taking on Missouri Baptist, USF Illinois at Judson and St. Ambrose. They're home to Olivet Nazarene. Here we go. The kick is underway. End over end, back into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, first and 10 for the Knights. Working from left to right. Good to see you, Bill, and you've had a happy birthday to you. What, day, day or two ago? Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was Wednesday. Celebrated my 29th birthday for I, I forget how many times. I was going to say times two, <laughs> three, three. <laughs> Let's take a look at this offense for the Marion University Knights. Offensive line averages 277 a man. Tackle to tackle. Duran Dillon at center, Dwayne Pop, Quade Pop, I should say, at guard along with Adam Warren, Zach Sibilla, and Austin Jones are the tackles. Quarterback Zach Bundelow, 74 of 111 through the air. Ten touchdowns, three interceptions. They want to run the ball. Christian Hunter up the middle. Cougars uh, stopped that pretty well. River Walsh came up and uh, run support from his linebacker spot. Cougar defense, Will Swartz. Joey Schaffelberger, Connor Price, they're having a great season. The down three for St. Francis. That is a pickup of two. Hunter on the carry. Came in leading with 278 rushing yards. Bundle out of the gun now. Second down and long. Hard count. Now wants to screen the ball near side. Here's a fingertip catch by Hunter. And brought down right at the 30-yard line. That's a great stop in the middle of the field that time. And coming up, that was Bailey Parker. Who had the 96-yard return last week for a, off a missed Field goal that was blocked by Damon Hunter. And now it's third down and four. Third downs last week. Marion in the loss was 5 of 12 against Iowa for 42%. They've got to get their own 35 this snap. They work from the right side hash mark now. Here's Bundelow again uh, waiting for the snap. Wants to throw. Rush is coming. Throws over the middle. Ball nearly intercepted in and out of the hands in the middle of the field that time. And, and let's see. Looks like uh, Nate Newcomer had a chance for the pick. Yeah, that was close, Joe. That would have been a huge, huge play early in this game. The little things, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So three and out go the Knights. Taylor Soper will uh, kick the football away, waiting for the snap. He leans in. And Cougars now have got nine men up the line of scrimmage. Rush comes, and the kick is away high end over end. Didn't get a lot on it. The wind may have caught it. Takes a sideways bounce inside the Cougar 40 and will go out of bounds somewhere around the 38-yard line. So a good defensive series for USF to start this ball game. Now we'll see Heath Simmons and company offensively on the field. Cougar offensive line. I almost hate to say what the average offensive average is as far as weight because it has been in flux this season. Uh, Lucas Fender did not play, play last week. Solomon C. Joe, I know, has been uh, banged up. He is out there today. 6'2", 288 senior at right tackle. And uh, Kevin Downley says, Cam Peterson's got to have a big day today. Here's a flip and a run to the left side. Block is made, but the, again, Marion flies to the ball very well. That was Clay Campbell that came up from a safety position. And, and defensively, Marion is very, very good. It's going to be tough to beat them, especially on lateral plays. Well, they extended that play out, Joe, so they got good pressure, good pursuit over here on the near side toward the home stands. Second down and 10, no gain. A.J. Dandridge comes in. He's wide to the right side. 
They come up and press coverage. Here's a run up the middle, and that's a good run. Second effort by Peterson, and it looks like he's got the first down. Cameron Peterson. That's his 86th carry of the year. Came in with 465 yards, a couple of rushing touchdowns, averaging over five and a half yards a carry, and that will improve that average. That'll be huge, Joe, if our offensive line can some make, make some holes in there for Cam. We know that Jared Almeida probably is going to be in there at center. Reeve Muncy's played a lot. Bronson Coy as well. A seed you mentioned. Joe Henry, I thought I saw him in on the sideline. Here is Heath Simmons. Flow throws the outside. Nice catch at the 45 and stolen his feet out of bounds. See if that's Dandridge out there. Yes, I think it is. And he gets us up near the first down. That was not an easy catch. Had to leave his feet kind of awkwardly with his back to the ball. And you heard of the name Lockett. Jalen Lockett starting at one of the linebackers today for Marion out of Northside High School. And Jay Sean Underwood from Snyder is a cornerback and one of the redshirt seniors on this team. Motion near side, they'll flip the ball again. Uh, cut inside, and they'll gain maybe a yard, maybe not. Greg Santelli, our referee, spots it back at a right the 40. Closer to the 42. They may have lost about a half a yard on that uh, quick f flip. Well, the good news is that's still a makeable third down play there with just a yard to gain. Peterson offset to the right side. Started with Eli Patchett. Now he sets up on the wing to the right. Two wide near side. Motion now left to right behind the line of scrimmage. That's McEachin. Here's the ball to him. He's got the catch and a run to the right side inside the 35-30 down the right sidelines to the 25 and out of bounds. And a good play that time by USF. And they'll move the chains first and 10. St. Francis on the move looking good this opening series. Joe, I like that play on third down. Marion's looking for a run up the middle. To get it out to Meacham, nice pass, get some confidence for Heath Simmons as well. Early moments of the ball game, Marion went three and out. Now coming into the game is Ethan Dye. Cougars with that revamped, and was there a penalty? Apparently against the Knights. Didn't catch the uh, announcement from Greg Santelli, but that takes the ball inside the 20, uh, inside the 15. And all the way down to about the 18-yard line. So a gift for the silver and blue. Must Didn't have, see what that was about. Must have come after the uh, the play there, Joe. A dead ball foul. Yeah, yeah. Almeida Looks leads like him it. up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10. Simmons out of the shotgun. Peterson offset to the left. Motion again right to left. Counter run coming by Peterson. Runs into a wall. Trying to fight his way inside the 16. Didn't get much more than that. He was tiptoeing around trying to find an opening there and just couldn't find a sliver of light. Gain is one, maybe one and a half. Clock inside, 11 and a half minutes. Time remaining here in quarter number one, no score. Cougars in the red zone, though, trying to draw first blood. Patch it back in. He's up on the wing to the right side. Two wide to the left, including Jay Siegel. Wide left side. Here's Simmons. Looks, screens the ball right side. Ball is caught. Peterson. Peterson dives inside the five. Got close to the goal line. Did not get in. Did he step out of bounds outside the five? Official is marking it down at the six. Hey, he must have stepped on the sidelines there because it looked like he was down near almost inside the one. Made a nice spin to the inside. That's unfortunate. Cougars do huddle up. Play clock at 18. Got a lot of time remaining. Still huddled up. Simmons uh, checks to the sidelines how they want to run this third down and four situation. These areas are difficult. Dandridge wide to the right side, wide left is Siegel. And here is a give to Peterson. Peterson off tackle, gets it inside the five, still driving, got it down inside the two. Should have enough yardage by far to pick up a new set of downs to work with. And it'll be first and goal at, uh, let's see where they're going to mark that. At the three, didn't think he got a particularly good spot, but <clears throat> take what you can get, right? Nice job of slashing inside to get that first down. That's huge here. First and goal from inside the five. Simmons gives the Peterson again, looking for a hole, and walks into the end zone. Three-yard, four-yard touchdown run at the 10-03 mark. And that was the easiest touchdown, I believe, in history that St. Francis has had against the Marion University Knights. Great job, offensive line, moving moving guys out of the way. Peterson following his blockers and getting into the end zone untouched. 
Cam Peterson with his third rushing touchdown. Jack James now on to try to make it a 7-0 lead. High snap, kick is long. It looks good, is good. 7-0, silver and blue, leading Marion, ranked number 10 coming in. And we're coming back. This is Cougar Football on WGL News Radio 1250, 105.5 FM. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart Virtual Walk in Clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260 266 4007 for more. Back at Darcy Stadium with Bill Scott, I'm Joe Parsons. 7-0 USF, and that exactly the kind of start that Saint, that uh, Kevin Donnelly was hoping for. Looking ahead, of course, a tough game today, then next Saturday at Indiana Wesleyan. The team, the Wildcats that beat Marion last week, 17-10. Knights with their first loss of the year. They're now ranked number 10, 2-1 in the Mideast League. Mark Henninger, their coach in his 10th year. They were 9-3, and 6-1 and one in the MEL last year. They lost at Northwestern in the tournament 25-20. Cougars trying to forget last season. 3-6, and six, overall 2-5 and five in the league. Under Kevin Downley, his 25th year. James getting ready to kick it away the way he started the game. Approaches at the 35. End over end kick going back. That'll be fielded, and they'll bring it out from the end zone across the 5 to the 10, 15, left side, and leaping over one tackler down the left side, 25 and out of bounds. So a good play by the Marion Knights on that kick return. They've got some of their best starting field position of the day, and we'll see Zach Bundle once again at quarterback for the Marion Knights. I think UFSF was a little surprised he brought it out of the end zone, Joe. Yeah, it was about two, three yards deep. Sometimes you just get that feeling. Sometimes you pay for it. First and 10, ball at the 29. Knows the football just inside the Knights 29. They're moving left to right now from the left side hash mark. Bundle onto the pistol alignment. Running back lined up directly behind him. Two wide to the right side for the Knights. Long count from the line of scrimmage. Here's the give, off tackle run. Second effort. And Good run that time across the 35. Now, it was there a late penalty flag thrown by Greg Santelli? Let's see what that's going to be about. Back near the line of scrimmage, Joe. Santelli looking over to the far sidelines. Apparently, is it going against USF? Cougars are backing up. Might have been a late hit. Uh, hands to the side of the face is the call. Penalties last week, Cougars had seven for 75. They're averaging just about 59 yards a game in penalties. That one is a major one. Takes it all the way to the USF 49. And obviously first and 10 for the Knights. Suddenly the beneficiary is some very good field position. Running back offset to the right side. Bundalo out of the shotgun now. Long count again from the line of scrimmage. Waiting for that snap, hands it off. Here's Hunter. Tripped up, keeps his balance, though, and angles to the left, got inside the 45. Still on his feet, down close to the 43, maybe the 42-yard line. Cougars had a shot at him back of the line of scrimmage, but could not finish. A determined run there by Hunter. Nice job of staying on his feet and getting some more yards for the for the Knights. Against the Wildcats last week, had 12 carries, 45 yards. For the air, leads him with 278 and adds to that total today. Still at the left side hash mark. Here is uh, Bundalo looking, looking, has time, throws to the right side. He's got a man out there. Ball is maybe intercepted inside the 25. It was Damon Hunter on the pick. And the Cougars force the turnover, and they'll get the football back. Damon Hunter read that play all the way, Joe, and he, he stepped inside right at the last second, took it away from the receiver on that play. Huge, huge play for the USF defense early here in the first quarter. It'll be St. Francis possession of the football. Let's see where they're going to mark that. And uh, exchange of footballs. I was following the one that went to the sidelines. 
And uh, now they're backing everybody up. It looks like it'll be first and 10. Let's call it the 17-yard line of St. Francis. On top already, 7-0. Second possession of the night. And here is uh, Simmons. Drops it up. Peterson spins, fumbled the ball a little bit, got it back. Otherwise, he had a lot more yardage. He was all by his lonesome out in the flats to the left side. But did bring it across the 20-yard line. He'll pick up about six and bring up second down and four. Somebody shoot somebody? <laughs> Somebody must know something we don't know. <laughs> looking at uh, one of the streams, they've got the score 13 nothing already. Are we looking at it? <laughs> uh, well, Back to the future. <laughs> penalty flag uh, thrown right at the snap. Peterson, on the carry. Peterson tried to work off, side, uh, off to the left side, did not find much. McKeechan now comes back onto the field. Let's see how the penalty is going to be assessed. Meanwhile, Patchett also checks into the game. Ethan Dye leaves. Whatever the penalty was, they declined it, Joe. So we got third down, a short four yards. Cougars trying to get out to their own just across the 27 on this snap. Dandridge in wide right. Cougars also show slot right as well. Here is a Simmons, fakes the handoff, wants to throw over the middle, and has got, uh, and when the ball was dropped, Jay Siegel, that does not happen often that time. And guess who was there? Jay Sean Underwood out of Snyder High School. Break Under up the play, fourth down coming up. Underwood seemed to have that play diagnosed all the way. He was right there to bat it down from uh, Simmons. So Jack James comes on now, will snap, and will kick the football away from inside his 10. Knights with one back in punt return at the 35-yard line. 8-17 remains quarter number one. Glad you could join us today here on WGL. Kick is away. Nice kick by Wobbly Ball. Running up to it. That ball is caught. And a run to the left side. There's some running room now. And a clear sailing now with a blocker in front inside the 40, 35, 30. Down the left sidelines. And finally knocked out of bounds inside the Cougar 15. So a good return that time. Big play for the Knights there, especially after turning the ball over. So trailing seven to nothing, Knights will come in now and first and 10 at the USF. 15 is where they're gonna set it down. Trying to tie the game. And they'll work from the left side hash mark. Zach Sibola, the 275-pound junior, working at right tackle. This is Bundelow out of the pistol. Turns around to the sideline. Still has got plenty of time, 15 on the play clock. And still 8.01 remaining in this first quarter. Now may have changed the play call at the line of scrimmage. Too wide to the right side. Here's the handoff, and uh, there is Hunter backpedaling inside the 15. Penalty flag. Was that a flag or a towel that went down? We'll have to wait and see as the ball carrier got it down to about the 11-yard line. Officials are conferring. Assume that was a flag. Usually it's real pronounced, no problem. <laughs> Sometimes players have got towels stuck uh, inside. It was holding against St. Francis. That's difficult to find that kind of a call on a running play. But they'll, the walk-off goes against the silver and blue. And now it'll be first and goal just outside the five. Hunter not in there right now as the running back. Be nice to have an explanation on holding on a run play. New number in there is Jake Riker, the freshman. They use him in these situations, runs to the right side, and he's going to score. From six yards out, Reichard had a rushing touchdown last year, last week of three yards. Today, from six yards out, and there was not a Cougar within sight of him. Time of the score at 6.35, 7.35. Yeah, Marion had that play well blocked. They've run that Wildcat a number of times over the years. and Boy, that looked like vintage Marion football there. 
Pomili now comes on to try to tie the game. Waiting for the snap. Got a good snap. Kick is on the way. Curling a little bit, but inside the left upright, it is good. We have a timeout here at Darcy Stadium. New game at 735, remaining quarter number one. 7-7 seven, seven each way. We're back right after this for Northwestern Mutual. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies ask, what's your salary? At Northwestern Mutual, we ask, what's your story? We know building the right financial plan means more than looking at money. That's why Landon Myers starts by asking the right questions and listening to what matters most to you. Then guiding you every step of the way to help you live the life you want now and years from now. You can plan your financial story through Landon Myers and Northwestern Mutual. Contact Landon at 260-318-2132. Let's see how our team can best benefit your team. Northwestern Mutual is the marketing name for Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, NM, and its subsidiaries in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Landon Myers is an insurance agent of NM. For additional information, please visit landonmyers.nm.com. Back at Darcy Stadium with Bill Scott, I'm Joe Parson. Glad you could join us today on this sunny autumn afternoon in Fort Wayne, 48 degrees at kickoff. When and will will it get up to the 50s? We'll find out maybe a little bit later on. Crowd enjoying it, though. Crowd is filled in. And by the way, good turnout today. Look across the way, Bill, the Marion crowd that is coming in attendance today. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Marion kicking away from their own 35 left to right. Big, big rivalry game. These two schools just two hours or so apart. It, it's been a big rivalry right from the start, Joe. Ben As but you've been a part of. Ben Butler, <laughs> it's been a long time, buddy. Wind a little bit of factor at times. As we mentioned, west southwest winds 11 miles an hour. It'll gust at times, though. Ben Butler and Crosley McEachin back in kick return. They wait uh, at the USF 10-yard line. Cougars on the road at Indiana Wesleyan next week, so two toughies today and next Saturday. And they're not home for a couple of weeks. In fact, three of the next four are on the road. Here's McEachin with the ball hung up at the 15, working to the right side. Has some running room. Got across the 20-yard, 30-yard line to about the 32, maybe the 33. So decent starting field position for USF now. But in a tie, 7-7 seven, seven after that six-yard touchdown run by Jack Reichard. Good field position, Joe, for the uh, Cougars to start this drive. Looking to regain the lead here. Jay Siegel comes in. He'll be the lone wide to the left side. They'll work uh, from the right side hash mark. Short side to the right. Simmons out of the pistol alignment now. Waits, slow snap, hands to Peterson. Peterson runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage at the 34. No gain. Unfortunately, that punt snap, or that uh, snap from center had a little hang time to it. Logan Blake uh, got in there. Assistance uh, from Dion Pettiford, who leads the Knights, by the way, with three sacks this year. Had five tackles, two for loss last week. Chauncey Mays at a tackle along with Tyler Jones starting today. Second down and nine. They credited Peterson with a hard-earned one yard. Shotgun formation now. Heath Simmons looking as motion right to left by Eli Patchett to the near side. Patchett's in the open, but Siegel's got the ball at the 40 and works against three defenders short of the first down. Got up to about the 44. That's close to a first down stick. Let's see. They're going to give it to him. I didn't think he got there. I, I was surprised where he marked it, too. Thankful. <laughs> so they move the chains. First and 10, USF at their own 45. McEachin and Dandridge go wide right. Siegel stays in wide left. They come up and press coverage on him. Marion shows blitz defensive right side. Here is Simmons. Looks quick throw in the flats. We've got a catch by uh, Patchett. Patchett gets by one, but not two. Crossed the 45, got to the 46, maybe the 47. But the, the officials are going to spot it back only with a yard gain. Marion had that play well diagnosed. There wasn't much there to gain. Again, we mentioned before, very tough against a good, disciplined defensive team to go wide with short passes. Two safeties back for the Knights. Second down and nine. They'll give the... Peterson looking for running room and uh, finds a little bit on just sheer will. Powers his way across midfield to about the 49. 
And that'll bring up third down and a short four for USF trying to get to the Knights 45 yard line. Patch it back in. Die checks out. They're kind of the messengers today with uh, as far as the plays. Dandridge stays in wide to the right side. Siegel to the left. And McEachin out here comes in motion again. Left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Here's the short drop. Simmons taking time, throws, and that one a diving try for the ball, and no good that time. Boy, that defense looked that was in there quickly. Too quickly, apparently not. There is a penalty flag. Okay, well, let's hold on. That's yeah, right there near where the uh, play took place, Joe. So I think they saw what we saw. In favor of the Cougars. They're going to call it holding against uh, the Knights. That'll be a walk-off inside the 40 to the 39-yard line and automatic first down for St. Francis. Marion with that penalty. Last week they had seven penalties for 67 yards. They're averaging about 64 yards a game in penalties. First and 10. Peterson running right side. Slices it through the line. Finds the running tough, though. Got only to the 42, maybe inside the 42-yard line. Not much there. And a ring up a second down and long call. That touchdown Cam got earlier in the game uh, looks so easy compared to that play. He's fighting for every yard here. Notice the football just outside the Marion 42. Cougars working from the right side hash mark. Left side is the wide out. Here is uh, Siegel. They come up and press coverage on him again. Simmons looks in the middle. And that one nearly intercepted, reaching around. They were intent trying to get the ball to patch it. It was Campbell that got his hands on the not only the ball, but the man as well. And third down and long coming up. I think he timed it just right there, Joe. Got to give the defender credit on that play. Pretty good play. You know, there was another snap that was a little bit high there. Last week, uh, Cougars were 5 of 11 despite the big win for 45% on third down opportunities. Trying to get to the 29 right now on this snap. Simmons might have changed the play call. We're at 429 remaining in quarter number one. The game is tied 7-all. Simmons looking, dumps it off left side. Here's Peterson and dives, comes up short of the first down, got to the 32. Now they're going to say that knee hit. In the NAI, they always mark you back and back around the 33-34 yard line. So to bring, bring up fourth down, and Kevin Donnelly might be thinking about going for it in this situation. Tony Smith uh, in there on the offensive line right now. For the silver and blue, the decision. Coach is still talking things over. They've got 16 on the play clock, and they will bring in Jack James now. But will it be a free goal attempt? This would be, how about this? A 49, let's call it a 50-yard field goal. Still five on the play clock. Got to hurry. And will they take a timeout? We're down to one, and they did. St. Francis uses one of their three timeouts. They want to talk things over further. We're still tied 7-7, 3.43 on the clock. And this is Cougar Football on WGL News Radio 1250, 105.5 FM. Playing competitive football in Fort Wayne requires focus, determination, teamwork, and buying into a system. That worked well for Brian Kurtz and Matt Milhouse when they played together at Bishop Bloors and again at the University of St. Francis. And now those two stalwart athletes continue to display those winning characteristics learned on the gridiron at their new business, Kurtz Mio Concrete Solutions. These days, it's less about football and more about finding the most cost-effective concrete and power washing solutions to meet your needs. Join the winning team at Kurtz Mio Coming up halftime, uh, stick around, join us. Uh, Matt Mopper will join us from Mopper Insulation with a look back, a look ahead. What's in store for the longtime uh, good sporter of uh, not just Cougar football and high school football, but uh, athletic sports in general. James stays on to attempt a 50-yard field goal attempt. May work a little bit against the wind as well. Attempted a 58-yarder against uh, Sienna Heights. Came up short on that one. For the lead. Waiting for the snap from 50 yards out. Kick on the way. He's got a chance. No, it's tailing off to the right side. No good. So the missed field goal will leave very good. Uh, there's a penalty flag. No, there, yeah, no. there's a flag down there, it looks like. Okay, let's hold on. Cougar offense is coming back in the on the field. 
Out of the Cougars signaling a first down. Roughing the kicker. Automatic first down. Well, they only needed four yards, so good break for USF. Good news, bad news. You missed the field goal, but you get the new chance to work with the football inside the 30 now at the 28-yard line. Looks like it might have been running into the kicker. Just uh, the five-yard walk up, but they only needed right. four. McEachin in the slot to the right side. Split wide of him will be A.J. Dandridge. And Heath Simmons has got motion ranked left behind the line of scrimmage. Looks, wants to throw the ball. Throws over the middle. And this one is in and out of the hands. Siegel wants a flag. He's not going to get it. He was double covered. You know that Marion is aware of number 85 for St. Francis. No question about that. Jay's made some huge plays for the Cougars this year. And really the last couple of years. He was at times one of our only answers offensively catching the football. Second down and 10. Clock stop with 3.33 remaining here in quarter number one. Same set. Too wide to the right out of that motion back. Right to left by McEachin. And play action fake. Here's Simmons looking over the middle. And the catch is made at the 15-yard line. That is Siegel. Had to go down to one knee to corral that low throw, but uh, it's good enough for the first down to move the chains. And Jay was thinking, I want to get up and run. <laughs> yes, he did. He looked like, oh, this isn't the NFL. <laughs> so a new set of downs for St. Francis. Cougars huddling up now. Play clock inside of 17. And Ben Butler has checked in. He's in the slot to the right side. Split of him remains. Dandridge, who's, I think, played every snap so far today. Play action fake. Here's a look to the corner. Got a man out there, and that ball was intercepted and out of bounds. They'll have the ball inside the five. So good news, bad news. But the Cougars, that ball hung up a little bit against the wind, and it was picked off. Yeah, it just hung up there too long. Uh, looks like number 46 was the intended receiver out there. He just couldn't get the inside route on that. That was Ethan Dye. Right at the goal line. Ugh. So the interception gives the ball back to, at the Marion. They'll have it at their, well, they give him a good spot of the ball at the five. I thought he went out of bounds closer to the three. But it will be the Knights offensive unit back in with Zach Bundelow at quarterback. He'll take the ball at the goal line. The running back lined up two yards deep. They'll hand the ball off and uh, uh, crossing the five, getting rolling out to about the six or seven that time. Let's see if it's still Hunter in there. It is Christian Hunter. Started the game with 44 carries. Averaged over six yards a carry come into the game. Picks up a couple here. Second down, let's call it a short eight. Want to keep them bottled up down here, Joe. Yep. little motion. Now, Ben Stevens has not been uh, called upon so far today. They'll run the ball yet again. And great uh, defense by St. Francis right at the point of attack. Coming in there and making the play. That was Brandon Lockwood who came up. And third down and seven now. Virtually no gain in last snap. River Walsh out there. Of course, Nate Talholm always. Knights trying to get out to their own just across the 15-yard line on this snap. Big play, two safeties back for the Cougars. Now they check off, still 15 on the play clock. Hunter, the running back, now he's offset to the right. Might have changed the play call. Shotgun formation now for Bundelow. Takes the snap, short drop, looking, being pursued, got away from run and runs to his left. Has some running room, got to the 10. He won't get much more than that, maybe to the 11. It'll bring up fourth down and still long. Boy, somebody ran right by Zach Bundelow in silver and blue. <laughs> I didn't catch the number. Had a marvelous opportunity. Maybe, I don't know if it would have been good for a safety, but could have knocked him down back around the goal line. Good news is they kept him three and out on this. So Cougars should get good field position on this punt. Soper comes in, waits about three yards deep in the end zone. Two back in punt return. Here comes the kick. It's blocked. They got it. 
Got a piece off. of it. Yeah, it rolls forward. It's a return inside the 25, and the Cougars will have it first and 10 at the 20-yard line on that ball that was recovered on the bounce by Braden Payne. What a daring play by Payne there to pick the ball up and, and carry it and get some positive yards on that play. Well, the good news, Bill, it came right up at mid, hit him almost in the belt. And if it would have been a low ball, he might have backed away, but he felt he had to, as long as he secures it, and uh, whether they say, don't do that again, but nice play. He timed it well, for sure. First and 10, USF on the block punt. They've got it first and 10 at the 19. Here's Simmons taking the ball. Looks, looks, throws the left side. He's got a catch. That's Jay Siegel inside the 10, down and out of bounds at about the, or what was that signal? Oh, that's Crosley McEachin. Right. Every time it goes left, you're tempted to say it's got to be 85. <laughs> got to be 85. It wasn't. First and 10, now first and goal, in fact, inside the 10. Still 25 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. Cougars trying to get another play off at the can. Dandridge goes wide. McEachin in the slot to the right side, and Jay Siegel is wide left. Simmons out of the pistol. Hands to Peterson. No, he's being pursued and threw it into the ground. Good decision by Heath. Let's see if that's going to stand and it does not draw a penalty for grounding. It is ruled incomplete. Still leaves eight seconds on the clock. Thankfully, my throat was kind of... <laughs> ooh, ooh. Well, you consider that Marion has come in with 17 sacks this season. They have one last week. So it still stays at the seven. Second down and goal from the seven-yard line. Working from the left side, hash mark. Peterson offset to the right side. They'll give the ball to him and runs into a wall at the five. Got to the five. And that will be the final play of this first quarter. Seven-seven tie. Going to quarter number two. Cougars will be knocking on the door. And we'll be back right after this for game one. Game One is the premier provider of apparel, uniforms, and equipment, unifying teams and fans in schools, clubs, and organizations. From our partnerships with teams and organizations to our work and dedication to the communities around us, we never stop. Striving to help you take on every day, season, and competition with excitement and purpose. Visit game-one.com to learn more about our apparel, equipment, and fan gear offerings. Game One, your first contact for all things game. All of us can use some help from time to time. That's why Blue Jacket supports men and women in the Fort Wayne area through employment and training. Also, those who may have the cards stacked against them from the homelessness, addiction and disability, a felony, even long-term unemployment. All can be overcome through Blue Jacket intervention. Blue Jacket even hires certain clients at its own enterprises, such as their high-end theft store, cleaning service, staffing service, and highly popular holiday event fantasy of lights blue jacket stands ready to help those in need you're listening to usf football on wgo news radio 1250 and 1055 with bill scott i'm joe parson we're back at darcy stadium cougars trying to cash in they've got a second goal from the seven simmons waiting for that snap of the football has it looks left looks takes the right side and that was low missed siegel had cam peterson Running the wheel round out to the left side. He was open for a moment, but uh, Simmons never saw him. Now it'll be third down. And we have a change, platoon change for USF. Did we miss it down, Bill? They're showing fourth down. I thought that was a th second down call. Instead, they'll opt for the field goal on fourth down. This will be a 22-yard field goal from the left side hash mark by Jack James. Waiting for that snap. Right-footed kick is on the way. Long enough, certainly, and good. Jack James from 22 yards out. Advantage St. Francis 10-7 with 14.50 remaining. Back with this for Current Mechanical. If you talk with any customer of Current Mechanical Service Group, they will probably tell you about just one member of the group. And that's good. Every technician in the Current Mechanical Service Group is an experienced journeyman. When it comes to commercial and industrial HVAC, plumbing, and refrigeration, they really know their stuff. What's more, they really know their individual customers. And here's why. When you are a customer of Current Mechanical Service Group, 
Our goal is to send the same technician to your facility every time you call for maintenance or service. You'll get to know that person on a first name basis. As we learn more about your facility, service and maintenance becomes easier and faster. That's why Current Mechanical Service Group is this area's first choice for reliable, experienced service and maintenance. From restaurants to factories, schools to shopping centers, your best bet for mechanical maintenance and service is to keep it current. Current Mechanical, on the web at currenthvac.net. Back at Darcy Stadium, well, you wanted more, Bill Scott. Uh, he wanted to get the touchdown, had to settle for three points, so that's a little bit of a win for the Marion Knights, and now they'll get the football back, working from right to left. Two yeah, back. Miss, missed opportunity there, Joe. But at least they got points on the board, and now they're in the lead. Give, hand it over to the defense and let them go to work. Ben Stevens is back in kick return. Jack James will try to prevent them from... Having a say in this, Jalen Jennings also back in uh, kick return. See how Jack does uh, against the wind, blowing up a little bit out of the south, west-southwest. Comes the kick, end over end. Let's see if the wind catches it. Backing up, Stevens has got it inside the five at the four. Curls to his right, 10, 15. Gets a block, crosses the 25-yard line. And did not get much more than that. Maybe another yard or two out to the 27. So Connor Price comes off the sidelines and brings that Cougar defense out there. Had a great game with a couple of sacks last week in Michigan. Seven tackles. Led the Cougars in that category. Number 20, C.J. Tanner on that tackle. Good sure-handed tackle for the Cougars on that uh, kickoff return. I've seen uh, mostly Christian... Hunter on the uh, running for. Not sure he's out there, though, that right now. We'll check that number as soon as we get a chance. Zach Bundelow at quarterback. A little motion now. Stevens comes back uh, left to right. They'll run the football, and there's a bit of a seam. And again, is out across the 35-yard line. Let's see if we can check the number of that. 42 on the carry there, Joe. That would be... Baron Hebler. Hebler leads him. That's his 60th carry of the year. Came in with 259 yards. Also reads, well, tied for the team lead in rushing touchdowns with five. William Gibson also has five rushing touchdowns. So that was a gain of nine, second down and one. Motion again. Steven sets up again, tight to the left side, and they'll run the ball once again. Hebler hit banged hard right at the 38-yard line. Let's see if they give him enough. Uh, they're going to mark him down short by about a half a yard. It'll be third down coming up uh, and about a half a yard. Nate Tellum and Scheffelbarger on that uh, tackle there, Joe. Nice job of stopping that play up. Here we go. Big play early in this game. 10-7 USF in the lead. Bundalo now turns away. Checks the sidelines for the play to be wagged in. Change the call again. Play clock at 11. Got one wide either side. Cougars come up and press coverage on the outside, near side here. Bundalo with the snap. Does hand the ball off and run right side. I'm not sure they got there. Cougars may have stopped it. It depends on the spot. Boy, USF thought they stopped him. And they're going to give him the first down without even measuring. Wow, crowd, crowd does not like that quick decision. That looked like St. Francis, the defenders out there, thought for sure that they stopped them. Yeah, you had A.J. Moore there, Laban Davis, and uh, Isaiah Higgins. Shotgun formation now for Bundalo. Will he throw? He does want to. Throws over the middle. He's got a man, and that one's intercepted. Cougars have get it, and they'll have it on the return inside the 45 of Marion down to the 43-yard line. So Marion's had an interception. Now the Cougars have got one. Looks like C.J. Tanner, number 20, with the interception for St. Francis, Joe. So a chance to add to the tenuous three-point lead with a lot of time remaining quarter number two. They'll have it first and 10 at the Marion. Going to move it back to the 44-yard line. But... USF in possession of the football. This time, 
Siegel in wide to the short side. That's to the left. They come up and press coverage on him once again. Motion left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Peterson looking for... No, it's... Uh, they did give the ball to him, I guess. I thought it was a fake after that first uh, indication. But, uh, again, tough run against this tough Marion defense. And no gain. Second down, still, let's call it 10. Looked like there was an opening there for a split second. And Marion closed in fast to uh, hold him to no gain. Look at Chauncey Mays standing over the ball. He's six one, redshirt senior. Tyler Jones, another redshirt senior, six footer, two seventy. Very tough to run against these guys. Patch it in motion, right to left, and they'll give now to Peterson. Peterson looking for a hole. The little guy scoots through a little bit, gets a little minor gain out to about the forty-two yard line, but that'll bring up a third down and long call for Heath Simmons. Trying to reach the 39, 34 yard line on this snap. Very little running room up there, Joe. We need to get a better push on the offensive line, move those guys off the line of scrimmage. Clock inside uh, now uh, approaching 11 and a half minutes time remaining quarter number two. Matt Mumper joins us at halftime. Stick around. Longtime sponsor of athletics in Fort Wayne out of Mumper Insulation. Simmons looking, play action fake, rushes coming, throws right side, nobody home. That time, Patchett might have been the intended receiver, but uh, that passed nowhere near him. And it looks like a squandered opportunity. Yeah, he threw that ball low. There's no chance for Patchett to make that catch. Now Jack James trying to bury the Knights back deep. He'll wait for the snap from center at about his own 45-yard line. Jalen Jennings back in uh, punt return, waits at the 10. Jennings has had one punt return last week for just four yards. Here comes the kick, and they're going to let that one go and into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. So the Knights down three with 11-17 remaining quarter number two. They'll have the ball back. Other games we mentioned going on of notes. Concordia on the road at Taylor today down south of here. Number five, Indiana Wesleyan. After that upset win at Marion last week, they're taking on Lawrence Tech in Michigan. Madonna home today to Siena Heights in the Midwest League. As we mentioned, there's three teams, 2-0 and o now, leading the Midwest League of the MSFA. St. X, ranked number 16. They're taking on Missouri Baptist, USF Illinois, a team that Cougars beat handily. They're 2-0 in the league, though, and they're at uh, Judson today, St. Ambrose, home to Olivet Nazarene. Check that Marion offense coming out. Two wide to the right. That'll be their short side. Zach Bundelow has a running back offset to the right side. First and 10 at their own 20. Looks on the read option, hands it off. And good defense by USF coming across. That was Nate Talholm. Played it very well. Made the tackle for no gain. Nice job of slashing in there behind the blocking to uh, make that tackle for no gain. Nice job. That's what he got to do sometimes. Just be a man. Raymond Smith is out there right now defensively for St. Francis. There's Bundelo now out of the pistol, backs away. Play clock still shows 14. Steps up, lets his line know what the play is going to be. Takes the snap, looks off tackle, run to the right side, and USF is there again. Great play defensively. More new numbers in there for St. Francis defensively. Might have been Cameron Moore. So third down and long. They've got to get out to the 30-yard line on this snap. Schwartz and Scheffelberger on that stop, Joe. Kevin Ford's out there, the freshman DB. Well, Kevin uh, Donnelly said we got to put some new troops in. we got to bring them along. We need them. Bundelow needs 10. Will he throw? He's got two wide to his right side. Short drop. Looking, looking, looking. Throws into the flats. He's got a catch and a good ta tackle. Tell you what, that was make a miss. Gain was only out to about the 23, 24 yard line. It'll be fourth down and long. Cougars celebrating. The defense has shown up today pretty good. Tell him diagnose that play. Perfect joke. Slashed in there and made an ankle tackle. 
Bailey Parker in punt return. Well, he had a missed field goal return of 96 yards last week. He'd love to have a punt return touchdown today. Ben Butler also back there with him. Soper to punt, waits inside the 10. 9-11, clock is moving. Here's the kick away. He's had one partially blocked. This one may go out of bounds and does somewhere inside the USF 45. But the Cougars, Bill Scott, are going to have great field position now in this, this four-down series coming up and leading a 10-7. Any points, any win is a good win on a day like today against a team like Marion. No question about it, Joe. And you really want to capitalize on these opportunities where you're getting great field position. It'll be first and 10 at the 41-yard line of St. Francis. Moving now left to right. Siegel wide to the left. The lone wide out there. No, he's not. He'll be joined by McEachin up in the... Actually, assumes more of a tight end position. Actually, a double wing. He comes in motion, in fact. They'll give the ball to him. Comes back to the left. Makes a mistake because it was a knight waiting right there. And it'll be a loss of about three yards. I'm curious to hear what that play was there, Joe, because uh, Marion... Marion's so quick to get inside. One of the Knights, who I think, who made that tackle, then hurried off field and collapsed. And he's got his teammates looking at him over there right at the down marker, Bill. But it'll be second down and 13. Play will continue since uh, the injury, if there is an injury, was off the field of play. Here's Simmons to throw, taking a look, dumps it off. Dandridge with the catch, cuts to his left side, stays on his feet for a moment, got the penalty yardage back or the lost yardage, you'd say, but it's going to be bring up third down, and they give them forward progress up to about the 44-yard line. you got to get to the 49 on this snap of Marion. He was looking for some more yardage on that play, Joe, but unfortunately he turned to the inside, and there was plenty of uh, nights there to uh, finish the tackle. More and more you see receivers in this day and age, they want to pivot, they want to give ground, and then they think they've got the quickness to get outside or whatever the case may be. Sometimes you're better off just to take that ball and go straight ahead, get what you can get. Here's the draw coming up. Here's a run. Boy, that looked good to Cameron Peterson eventually, but Marion does a great job of flowing to the football, and there's going to be no gain. It'll bring up fourth down and six. Once again, that Marion defense diagnosed that play. It, it, it's more, you know, my, my observation is they wait and react to what they see, especially those linebackers and safeties and cornerbacks. They come up, they flow to the football so very, very well. Cougars have to do a better job of controlling the line of scrimmage there too, Joe. No question. James in the punt from his 31, got the kick away, line drive, nice sailing kick. They'll say goodbye to that. Hits inside the five and oh. down right there. What a, wow. What Cougars, a bounce. Cougars, great pursuit downfield and kept that from going across. And how does Jack James do that? Dead in that ball, it bounced straight up in the air instead of kicking into the end zone. So first and 10, Marion, they've got it inside their 10 at about the five, maybe the six. With 6.55 remaining, the offense backed up, but back on the field in possession of the football, trailing by three. Lots of practice. Two wide to the right side. Here's Bundalo leaning in. Now gets ready to take that snap of the football. He's got it, wants to hand it off. Cougars stop that. At second effort, though, there's a push up to about the 9 or 10-yard line. Cougars had it stopped initially, but USF is not getting that flow to the football that we've seen by Marion. They get, once they uh, see what the play is going to be, they send two, three, four, five guys immediately. USF had one or two, but they couldn't finish the play. It ends up a gain of four. Schaufelberger changes his position slightly. Also, A.J. Moore coming off the right side. River Walsh, defensive right side. They'll run the ball right side, and there's that Cougar defense submerging. No gain right to the 10. And it'll bring up third down. Marion, or the Knights, or <laughs> excuse me, Cougars put five, six guys there in the box. They anticipated that run play and a good job of snuffing that out. Cougars change personnel now on this third down and five, let's call it. They've got to get out to about the 17, just short of the 17. 
One wide to the left. Bundle low backs away. Play clock still is 16. Got plenty of time to work with now. Running back is offset now to the left side. And here is Bundalo. Dumps the ball off, and that's a catch made, but that and Cougars that time fly to the football. They'll get it out to about the 15. Well, they had to get to the 17, and they are now on second effort, very close to it. They're going to give him the first down. They are. They didn't wrap up his legs, Joe. They were on top of him, and he just carried guys till he got that first down. I don't know how long you've played football, but they always coach you from way back. Knees or belt buckle below. First and 10. Knights manufacturer first down. They didn't even bother to measure. A lot of play time, a lot of play clock. We're down to five minutes remaining in this first half. Marion with the ball down three on the road. A little motion now of Stevens resets. He's not been thrown to today. Here's a stretch handoff to the left side. Cougars close down on that and do finish the play. Dandridge was in there. I should say the Kari Jones finished off the play with a tackle, had an assist. Tell him in there on that play too, Joe. Gain is out to the 17. So it'll be a gain of one, second down and nine. Clock ticking away inside of four and a half minutes time remaining, quarter number two. Joe, at halftime, they're going to recognize the 2016 National Championship team. That was that was a great memory for you in these yeah, 25 was. years, wasn't it? I'll tell you a story about the Baker fans. Here's an off-tackle. No, it's a throw to the right side. They got a man out there. There's Stevens at the 40, 45 at a foot race, and finally brought down from behind inside the Cougar 40-yard line. Boy, that was a touchdown-saving tackle. Otherwise, speedy Ben Sa uh, Stevens was gone. Bailey Parker out there on that uh, tackle to save a touchdown, at least, at this point. Marion with all three of their timeouts remaining. Cougars have got two, and they mark it at the 35 of USF. Field goal would tie the game. Baron Hebler is in as the running back offset to the left side. Leads them in the number of attempts, rushing attempts this year. Stevens in motion now. Comes back, resets tight to the left side. And they'll hand the ball off. And here is Hebler, tripped up at the 35, got fell forward to about the 34. Will Swartz credited in on the stop for St. Francis. Had two tackles last week in Livonia, Michigan. As far as field goes... Pomili is three out of four. Had a 36-yarder last week in the loss. Play clock still at 13. Bundalo changed the play call once again. He's got two wide to his left. Takes the snap, looks to Hebler. Hebler curls left side, found a, or right side, I should say, found a hole and carried inside the USF 30-yard line down to about the 28. Let's see where they're going to mark that football. Did his knee hit back at you know, about to the 29? So it'll be third down and four. Ebler gets some tough yards there. Kind of reminds me of Eric Johnson way back when he was with the Cougars in 2002 03. There, there you go. Big third down call for both teams right now. Got to get to the 25 of USF on this snap. And they'll run the football again, spinning and fighting his way for the first down. Again, Cougars slow him up but cannot finish. Schaufelberger got to him back around the 30-yard line but did not get any help. So first and 10, Marion's got it at the USF 34 at the 24-yard line. And now a hurry up. We're inside of two minutes' time remaining. Clock is moving. Hebler offset to the left. Shotgun formation for for Bundalo. Takes that snap, rolls to his left side, plants his feet, throws in the flats. Has got a sliding catch inside the 20 at the 18. That's Jacob Pressler on the catch. Had four catches last week for 58 yards. Defense have made some big plays here today. Time for another one, Joe. Yep, they could use one. Second down after a gain of five. 
Marion Knights trying to manage the clock. They've got all three timeouts remaining with 1.12 to go. Quarter number two, down three. Hebler offset to the right side. Wide side is to the right. And here is the read option. They'll give it to Hebler. Tripped up, and he may have tripped over his own man. That was an offensive lineman that uh, was trying to make a block, and that prevented a big gain. He's knocked down at the 19. May have lost about a yard. I'd have to credit uh, Marion 78 with the tackle on that play, I think, <laughs> Joe. Third down. Cougars come up in press coverage all around the field. Now they back away, still 20 on the play clock. Big call coming up once again. Marion trying to get inside the 15 to the 14-yard line for a new set of downs. Game clock inside of 30 seconds. Hebler resets again, offset to the left side. Bundelow drops, looks, throws to the right side. He's got a man out there, and the ball's caught going out of bounds. That's a great play that time. The ball was delivered. That was Ben Stevens, I believe, on that down-and-out pattern, and Bundelow threw to a spot before Stevens even broke. Inside, it'll be first and goal inside the Cougar 5 at about the 3. 15 seconds remaining. Timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well and be back right after this for Mopper Insurance. Insulation. Everyone knows that winter is coming, and when it does come, it's the wind and cold air that really chill your home. Momper Insulation can keep the cold out by sealing the leakage points and filling empty sidewalls, even through masonry or siding, without unsightly holes or blemishes. They're also experts at insulating crawl spaces, attics, and any place the cold could get in and ruin your winter. Let Momper seal your house, saving you 30 to 50% off your heating bill. Call today for a free energy audit before it's too late. Momper Insulation. Back at Darcy staying with Bill Scott. Timeout that was taken. Uh, we don't see who it was taken by. They still show. Now they do. It was called up by, by Marion. They've got two remaining. Same as St. Francis. But just 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Touchdown would give the Knights uh, the lead headed to halftime. And I'm sure that uh, Mark Henninger is talking about options. If they come up short, they would take maybe another timeout and uh, try to bring the field goal team on to at least tie the game. But, uh, again, a lot of it's dependent on the USF defense right now. Schaufelberger heads out there. Denari Jones, Damon Hunter. Cougars have had some big plays today. Had an interception. They could use one right now, at least to stop it from a rushing touchdown. Hebler stays in as the running back. Bundalo, big kid, 6'4", 235, redshirt junior. Thrown for over 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Three, touch, three interceptions coming in. He's thrown one of those today, so he's got four on the year. Wouldn't be surprised to see him try to get the ball to number 12 out here on the close hash out here. I think that's got Hunter's a, territory, Damon Hunter out there. That's a real mismatch there height-wise. Yeah, Pressler goes six foot four. Yeah, the way we used to get the ball to Seth Coat on plays like this, Joe. Going back to Jeremy Dutcher, also at six five. Oh yeah. Here we go. Play fifteen on the play clock. Bundled out of the pistol now. It's got motion. Stevens resets tight to left. Here's Bundelo. Hands the ball off. Straight run left side down inside the three to the two. Didn't get in. There's 14 seconds remaining. I don't think the game clock started right away. It showed 15. And stopped one second. Whoa. Somebody remind our home stat crew they're home. <laughs> nice play by Tellum getting in there to uh, stop that ball carrier short. Yeah, that slow uh, start of the clock enables Marion. They uh, have no timeouts remaining now, which is strange. I thought they I would have USF one. I think USF may be questioning the uh, time on the clock, too. At least Let's, asking them to check it. Well, the Marion coach is out there. And now, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the St. Francis coaching staff saw what we did, and they're looking at the clock as well. Somebody a little slow at the switch. Trying to talk to somebody upstairs, I think. Meanwhile, the teams are coming out, but... Uh, is that Joey Didier out there saying, uh, fellas, uh, <laughs> I know we're home today, but 
They have not made a change. Wow. So second down and goal from the two. Bundalo still in the pistol alignment. Running back lined up behind him. Now they change off. Hebler looks, everybody looks to the far sidelines. Play clock at 14. Here's Bundalo with the snap. Again, uh, wants to hand it off. Run left side and into the end zone. That time, second effort by Hebler. Got it in with 12 seconds remaining. That will give Marion its first lead of the day at 13 to 10. And now Pomili will come on to try to give him a four-point lead. Good push by the Marion offensive line there against the uh, USF defensive line. Uh, Hebler, good play. I tell you, he's hard to bring down. He's got a low center of gravity, keeps those legs driving, and uh, it was a fairly easy touchdown for Marion. Here's the kick now. Pomili looks long enough, and it is good. So we still have 10 seconds on the clock, <laughs> which is a little strange because it should not have run after the touchdown, which was 12 seconds. Somebody's got to talk to the uh, the timekeeper up here. You're at St. Francis today, not down in Marion. 14-10 with a timeout down below. We'll be back for the coach. This time of year, everyone is thinking football. And now there's a special opportunity to grab a copy of Fort Wayne's legendary coach, Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. At the University of St. Francis, Coach Dees Cougars captured back-to-back -back national championships in 2016 and 2017. His new book reveals over 40 years of coaching trials and tribulations, as well as the ability to overcome personal adversity and challenges. Snap the Whistle, a perfect gift idea if you're truly a football fan. Get a personally autographed copy in the USF football office, also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. Well, officially, uh, Cougars will have 10 seconds to work with after the touchdown was scored with 12 seconds. That's a little bit hard to figure, but even more so, the plays earlier were the Running play ticked off just one second off the clock. Somebody's going to have to talk to somebody up here at halftime. Marion will kick it away, and it'll all be academic. USF will get the football to start the second half, and Matt Mumper will join us at halftime. Part of our Parkview Sports Medicine halftime show. Crowd very quiet now after that uh, last reserve. Short kick, end over end. That'll be fielded, running up to it at the 20. And a return across the 25 and out to about the 28-yard line with five seconds remaining. And there is a penalty, of course. You know, we've been doing this 25 years, and you think you've seen it all. <laughs> and uh, well, I thought I saw it all last week because we've seen big plays, but... First time I could remember in the first quarter, the Cougars with a block punt recovered in the end zone for a touchdown, followed by a block field goal, returned 96 yards for a field goal. Penalty is against St. Francis. That's why we keep coming back, right? I guess. They were still above ground. That's the main thing. Well, I would expect a kneel down now as the ball is going to come back inside the 15. And the Cougars do assume the victory... Formation to kneel down. And that's going to be that. So after 15 and 30 minutes plus of college football here in uh, Fort Wayne, it is a 14-10 lead in favor of Marion coming back to take the lead here at uh, halftime. And we're headed to our Parkview Sports Medicine halftime show right after this for Parkview Ortho Express. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express walk-in clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart virtual walk-in clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260-266. 4007 for more. 
This time of year, everyone is thinking football. And now there's a special opportunity to grab a copy of Fort Wayne's legendary coach, Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. At the University of St. Francis, Coach D's Cougars captured back-to-back national championships in 2016 and 2017. His new book reveals over 40 years of coaching trials and tribulations, as well as the ability to overcome personal adversity and challenges. Snap the Whistle, a perfect gift idea if you're truly a football fan. Get a personally autographed copy in the USF football office, also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. All of us can use some help from time to time. That's why Blue Jacket supports men and women in the Fort Wayne area through employment and training. Also, those who may have the cards stacked against them from the homelessness, addiction and disability, a felony, even long-term unemployment. All can be overcome through Blue Jacket intervention. Blue Jacket even hires certain clients at its own enterprises, such as their high-end theft store, cleaning service, staffing service, and highly popular holiday event fantasy of lights blue jacket stands ready to help those in need greatness doesn't happen overnight it takes time focus and dedication at shelter insurance we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades and that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. In Northeast Indiana, contact Brandon Scott Shelter Insurance at 342 Enterprise Drive, Warsaw, Indiana, or call 574-376-4448. It's halftime. Welcome in to the Park View Sports Performance Halftime Show. Building athletes through athletic training development. Welcome back, everybody. We are back with one of my closest friends. You know, he's been a longtime sponsor, very supportive, our most treasured sponsor, in fact, Matt Momper from Momper Insulation. You know, Matt, we've, we've done these interviews for a number of years now, and uh, we've, we've talked about a lot of things. I don't think I've ever asked you in the past about your athletic career, your academic career, going back and uh, what, uh, what impact that may have made upon you as, as an individual, as a as a husband, as a father, and, and certainly a, you know an owner of a business. But uh, tell me about uh, your background, both academically and uh, as far as your athletic career, going back to maybe uh, high school and college. Well, I was born in Fort Wayne and started my uh, Catholic education at downtown St. Pat's. Uh, the church is still there; the school closed, but I started my sports career there and uh, my education under the nuns there and. After that, I went to Bishop Dwenger High School for four years and uh, played football, basketball, and ran track for a couple years. And, and then I decided I'd work for my dad and, and uh, make some money and save some money. Um, after uh, high school, I went to Ball State University and uh, got a couple degrees in economics and management and got out in four years, which my dad liked. And then I went out to Drake University and... Uh, got a master's in business. Uh, I did a two-year program in one year and uh, graduated on a Thursday and got a rental car and brought everything back and then had to go back and t- take the rental car back to Iowa because it cost too much to leave here. And <laughs> Monday morning, I started to work for my dad at uh, Mount Per Insulation. I want to circle back. You mentioned a couple of years at Dwinger playing football. Was there anything that stood out in your mind about that experience? You know, maybe from a a playing standpoint or a game standpoint, uh, what do you you recollect? Just, uh, I would say, whether the football, basketball team or in a fraternity, which was really nice. I came from the south side of town, but I played on the north side of of the school system. Uh, So I got to meet a lot of new young men that became my friends and you had to redevelop friendships and I think that's really important in life Uh, sports you know uh, it teaches teamwork and if you're playing football and sometimes basketball uh, it makes you tough I mean you get knocked down you have to get up you have to make the tackle on a bigger guy coming around the corner it's like you got to do it but you know you're going to get hurt or or not hurt but you're going to get bruised but you do it Um, the teamwork taking orders from coaches, and, you know, it's like working for my dad. I mean, it wasn't, would you please come over here? It was like, hey, we need this insulation over here now. Or, you know, this is a play we're going to run. Let's go. Let's be, you know, let's do these drills. But, no, it gets you ready. Sports gets you ready for life. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about it. So you, you leave and you're back uh, working for your dad. And I'm sure you didn't have an executive position to begin with. Uh, talk, talk about the, the, the baptism of fire, so to speak. How did you go about learning everything there is to be learned about mopper insulation? Well, I was very fortunate. In the seventh grade, I started working for my dad on, on weekends in the summers, full-time on the cruise. And then in high school, the same thing. And then in college, I'd work half the time with the crews in the field. The other times I would be with the sales force learning the sales aspect. But when I got back, you know, I knew how to sell, but the operational end, I would be right next to him or right next to Terry Hughes, a uh, 50 a uh, year uh, employee with us learning the ropes. And it's sort of funny, everybody saying, oh, you're the son of the owner. I had a metal chair, a folding chair for a used desk in an <laughs> office in the back that had no heat and I go I uh, trust me and I had a I had like a 20 year old pickup truck with roll down hand roll down windows and no locks a three on the tree I mean trust me Joe he uh he made it very I'm not going to say difficult but I earned my pay and I learned and I appreciated what I learned with the pay I earned very challenging. Let's fast forward to today's economy. You know, since COVID, things have changed from a business standpoint. Now we've got high inflation, we've got uh, supply shortages, and I'm, I'm sure that's affected mopper insulation. And uh, how have you tried to, let's, let's talk about inflation. Uh, first of all, obviously, uh, labor's more expensive now, and then just trying to find people willing to work. And uh, how have you been able to address these situations? Well, when COVID started, and I'll just say the magic date was March 27th, 2019, we were deemed uh, a company that was supposed to be opened by the governor. And I always told everybody, I'm proud of that, number one. And number two, whatever challenges are thrown at us, we're going to stand up and meet these challenges. And it seems like every day, Joe, we turn around, there's a new challenge for three years. I've, and our team has never worked harder to try to deliver the service, the quality, and the product, but sometimes the products aren't here. But you talk about inflation. The most important thing for me this past year with the way inflation just took off, it wasn't the yearly, here's your cost of living uh, raise and a little bit of a more to bring you along. I had th two to three raises to make sure our men and ladies in the office would you know, earn the money that they wouldn't go backwards. They need to feed, clothe, and shelter their family. So we took care of them. So yes, uh, and the products that we continued to buy, you know, every time you turned around, somebody was raising the prices. So we did have a couple price increases just so that we could stay even instead of going backwards. But our biggest thing was we have to take care of our people so that we can have uh, them here to deliver the service that our customers, the builders, the general contractors, the individuals have come to know. You're in the insulation business. Has it been problematic to find material to, to keep your business going? Oh, for two and a half years, we were on force majeure with foam. And thank God we've been foaming since the 70s and we have friendships all throughout the, na uh, the nation. I mean, we went from two suppliers to sometimes four suppliers just to get the material in so we could service our, our customers. But sometimes we had to tell individuals, we will get to you this winter or spring when it slows down where we can have enough foam to get to you. I know they didn't like it, but a lot of them said, yeah, we're gonna wait on mopper insulation because we know we're gonna get the job done right. And, and they understand it, they get it. I mean, well, gosh, sometimes when you go to the grocery store, even to today, and you look down this aisle and it's like, where is the food or where are the, where are the paper towels? They're all gone. It, it's just mind boggling. But you know, the other products, yeah, everybody continues to have just glitches here, there and everywhere. We're still on allotment with fiberglass. We're getting enough, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a chore every day. You know, we haven't even talked about how you weathered through the, the, the fire because that could have been calamitous and, 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 and end all. But uh, despite it all, where we are then, uh, you kept the doors open somehow through the grace of God. And now with yes. inflation, as you said, there's always um, seems to be a challenge down the road. 
Where, where do you see Momper uh, insulation, let's say five years down the road, 10 years down the road, beyond? And, and after Matt Momper decides to leave, you know, get your crystal ball out and give us a little taste. Well, Charlie retired when he was 70, so I guess that's uh, <laughs> maybe the goal for me. But, you know, we are constantly grooming, training the next generation, whether it's in the office, in the field, the mechanics. We have great people, and it's a real challenge, you know. Uh, but we keep moving forward that way. You know, we'll add new products, you know, down the road as, as everything evolves. It's amazing five years ago what we didn't have that we have now. We will chain, train our, our workforce and, and you know, cross-train them and give them some more skills. So I think with the Mount insulation, you know, been in business since 1956. And, you know, hopefully we'll continue on to 20. 56. You know, I don't think I'll be around, but hopefully the person that takes my place will have the, you know, our family comes first. We got to take care of our family and our family to take care of us and then we'll take care of our builders and our customers. Great perspective from Matt Momper, friend of athletics in Fort Wayne, and I'm very pleased and honored to call him my friend. Now let's get back to more football on WGL. News Radio 1250, 105.5 FM. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart Virtual Walk-In Clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260-266-4007 for more. Here's a great Christmas gift-giving idea for that special man of the house in your life. Give him a copy of legendary coach Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. Kevin Donnelly has built a prolific college coaching career in Fort Wayne, winning back-to-back -back national football championships here at the University of St. Francis. But it hasn't always been an easy ride. Follow the trials and tribulations of Coach D's 40-plus years of college coaching, the ups as well as the downs, and examples of perseverance and triumphing over adversity. More importantly, with his guidance, how boys wanting to play winning football also became responsible men contributing to their communities. Snap to Whistle provides laughs, some tears, and great life examples sure to entertain any man. Get your copy of Snap to Whistle today. And when you buy in the Cougar football office, Coach D will also personally autograph your very own copy. Snap to Whistle, also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. All of us can use some help from time to time. That's why Blue Jacket supports men and women in the Fort Wayne area through employment and training. Also, those who may have the cards stacked against them from the homelessness, addiction and disability, a felony, even long-term unemployment. All can be overcome through Blue Jacket intervention. Blue Jacket even hires certain clients at its own enterprises, such as their high-end theft store, cleaning service, staffing service, and highly popular holiday day event fantasy of lights blue jacket stands ready to help those in need greatness doesn't happen overnight it takes time focus and dedication at shelter insurance we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades and that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. In Northeast Indiana, contact Brandon Scott Shelter Insurance at 342 Enterprise Drive, Warsaw, Indiana, or call 574-376-4448. You're listening to USF Football on WGO, News Radio 1250 and 105.5. Halftime back at Darcy Stadium with Bill Scott. I'm Joe Parson. Been a good game up and down for St. Francis here tonight. A game that really it's a must win for both teams, but uh, especially for St. Francis. Uh, they already have two losses on the year. Uh, line score on the ball game. The game was tied at the end of the first quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. And uh, Marion scores a late touchdown in the second quarter to come back from a 10-7 deficit. They lead here at halftime now 14-10. to 10. Game started out with a four-yard touchdown run by Cameron Peterson. It was so easy. He walked uh, almost untouched into the end zone from four yards out at the 10-0-3 mark. Jack James added the extra point 7-0. Then Hunter had an interception at the St. Francis 17. 
team could not do anything with it. Instead, Marion would march downfield. They would get a Wildcat six-yard touchdown run from Jack Reichard at the 735 mark. They, and the extra point was good by Pomili, and the game was tied at the end of the first quarter, 7-7. Interception would uh, give... Uh, the uh, Knights a chance, but uh, they couldn't do anything with it. Then on a punting situation, it was blocked. Cougars would take over the football in good field position, but they would have to settle for a 22-yard field goal by Jack James at the 1450 mark. So the Cougars get points on the board. They lead 10-7, but then an interception would uh, give them another opportunity. But uh, again, they had it first and 10 at the 40, 49, came away with no points, and that would set up a two-yard touchdown run by Hebler with just 12 seconds remaining, or was it 10 seconds? We don't know, but the point is they scored a touchdown. Pomili added the extra point. That's the way the first half ended at 14 to 10. Specialist on the field, now come the Cougars. Marion coming out as well with our halftime warm-ups. Let's bring in Bill Scott with a look at some of the numbers that you see. What, what strikes you, Bill? Uh, one of the things that really jumps off the page right away, Joe, is third down efficiency. Marion's three for six, obviously 50%. Uh, the Cougars are struggling there, one of six on third down uh, possessions. Uh, another thing, uh, their offensive plays in yards. Uh, Marion, 27 plays for 83 total yards. USF, 34, yard, 34 plays for 112 yards. So the two defenses are really carrying the day right now, and it kind of shows in the score right now. How about some of the individual numbers? Uh, for Marion, their quarterback, Zach Bundelow, he is 4 for 7 for 72 yards. Uh, he threw two interceptions. Uh, one of the interceptions was to... I know Hunter had the first 20. one. Yeah, Hunter. And then C.J. Tanner. And C.J. Tanner. Unfortunately, the Cougars couldn't capitalize on those turnovers. Uh, leading rusher for Marion right now. Baron Hubler, he has 12 carries for 31 yards. On the uh, Cougars' side, Heath Simmons, a solid 10 for 17 passing, one interception, 54 yards, no touchdowns. Leading ball carrier for the Cougars, as expected, might might be expected, Cam Peterson, he has seven carries for 43 yards with a long of 17 yards. He had the Cougars' uh, lone touchdown there in the first quarter, a three-yard run. On the receiving side, uh, not much there. Jacob Pressler for Marion, he has one reception for five yards. Hubler, one reception for four yards. For the Cougars, let's see here. We've got Jay Siegel leading the way with two receptions for 23 yards, a long of 13. Crosley McEachern, he has one reception for 12 yards, a obviously long of 12 yards. Team's getting ready to start the second half. It's 14-10 in favor of Marion. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this for Public Service Credit Union. Learning to manage your finances? Maybe not a lot of fun, but what if you actually got paid to learn? Public Service Credit Union is partnered with Zogo, the gamified financial literacy app that lets you earn while you learn. With real-life rewards like gift cards to your favorite stores, bite-sized modules tackle topics like saving for retirement, buying a car, even opening a checking account, lessons that are fun for students and even parents. Get started by downloading the Zogo app. Use access code MYPSCU. Finally, it pays to learn about finances thanks to Public Service Credit Union. Game One is the premier provider of apparel, uniforms, and equipment, unifying teams and fans in schools, clubs, and organizations. From our partnerships with teams and organizations to our work and dedication to the communities around us, we never stop. Striving to help you take on every day, season, and competition with excitement and purpose. Visit game-one.com to learn more about our apparel, equipment, and fan gear offerings. Game One, your first contact for for all things game. Got some updates on some scores elsewhere around the MSFA today at uh, Livonia, Michigan. It's uh, Madonna hanging in against Siena Heights. It's 21-13 in uh, that ball game. Uh, they are in the second quarter, at least uh, that was the last report. Concordia at Taylor trailing. The Trojans have got the lead 7 to nothing against visiting uh, Cardinals. Uh, the other game, Indiana Wesleyan, 7 nothing a lead at uh, Lawrence Tech early on. That was a fourth, first quarter score. 
And uh, it's uh, Missouri Baptist leading at St. Xavier, three to nothing. So some surprises early on. Rest of the action a little bit later on. Cougars after today, they're on the road next Saturday. 12 noon will be the kickoff. They play three of their next four on the road starting next week at uh, Indiana Wesleyan, October the 22nd. That'll be a 12 noon kickoff. As far as Marion today, the first of two games on the road for the Knights. They're in Ann Arbor next Saturday taking on Concordia University. Getting ready. Marion will kick away from left to right. Cougars down four. About ready to get the football. And here we go to play football. Short end over end kick. That'll be fielded and fumbled. Picked up at the 15. And a run to the left side across uh, near the mouth to the 19, perhaps. We'll see the spot of the football. And USF uh, dodges a big time bullet. But they will have their hands on the football now, moving right to left. Let me bring you up here, Bill. Go ahead. Uh, McEachern on that kickoff return for the Cougars, Joe. Yeah, Crosley McEachern and uh, tight formation this time to start the second half. Heath Simmons at quarterback. Motion now to the near side. They give it on the flip to the short side. A little better blocking this time. It, it'll be a gain out to about the, depending where he stepped out of bounds, somewhere short of the 45, I thought the 25, I wish the 45, 25-yard 25 line. The seed you got out there, the big fellow to throw a block. And they'll spot that ball up at the 23-yard line. Gain of about four, second down and six. That's one of the best uh, runs of the day from that sweep standpoint where they, it, it's ruled a pass and a completed pass. Now, Ethan Dye goes uh, motion right to the right side. Here's counter run and some running room for Cam Peterson up across the 30 to the 31. First and 10, USF, they'll move the chains. One of the better runs Cam's had today. Nice, nice opening there at the line of scrimmage for him to s split through there and get the get the big game. Haven't you always wondered what it's like in the halftime when coaches are talking, like in group, to an offensive line? you got to do better. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's words that are more to the point than that. <laughs> Here's the Simmons dropping screens. The ball, Peterson's got it at the 30. Needs a block. Got one and uh, knocked out of bounds short of the 40-yard line. That time coming across and making the play defensively was Jake Paris. So let's see. That'll be a pickup of about eight. and In fact, about nine yards. They'll spot it at the 44. Nose of the, nose of the football just sh shy of the 44-yard uh, Let's try the 30, 39 yard line, but second down and short. I was gonna say Reeve Muncy with a nice block out there for Peterson to get some extra yards on that screen. Dandridge comes wide ride. They'll run the ball again, off tackle run. Peterson kind of rolls out across the 40, brings it out. Uh, they're gonna give him a pretty good spot of the ball up around the 43 yard line. You know, when you're little like that, sometimes they can't find you sometimes. <laughs> you know, Cam Peterson goes up well, I tell you, he's bigger than I thought. I thought he was about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, they list him at 6 feet, 185-pound senior. He's a willowy guy. Did pick up the first down. First and 10, improving field position for St. Francis. Inside of 13 minutes, they'll go to him again. Bowls his way across the 45, out to about the 46. Just all business right now for St. Francis. Ben Butler was in there. Now checks out of the ball game. New number on the offensive line, by the way, for St. Francis. Want to check it since we get that. That's Jaden Abuka Dalaka. Easy for me to say. Say that three times oh, fast. Yeah. That was uh, good for three yards. Here's a fake and a throw in the, in the slot. They've got the catch. McClure, I believe, lost the football. Scramble for it. Who's got it? Looks like it's going to be Marion, and they return it. The left side. And all the way inside the USF 35-yard line. Preston McClure had the ball, trying to spin away and get some extra yards. Popped out of his hand straight in the air and recovered. It'll be officially a fumble recovery. And Marion capitalizing. They've got it first and 10 right around the USF 35. What a disappointing turn of events there, Joe, for the Cougars. Trying to get those extra yards. Ball pops loose and Marion recovers, picks that ball off in the air. Now they're going to be threatening the Cougars now. Try to extend this 14-10 lead. 
with 12.02 remaining here in quarter number three. This, ja this game of football, college football, it can change on a dime. Feeling good about yourselves, moving the football, and suddenly your defensive unit is out on the field. So the Marion offense out there, led by Zach Bundelo, the 6'4", 235-pound redshirt junior quarterback, looks off to hand it. No, he throws the ball in the spot. It's got Ben Stevens, cuts to his left, and spun around inside the 15, gets down close to the 12-yard line. Another big play there for Marion's offense. He'll have him inside the red zone, threatened again to add to this four-point lead. First and 10 at the 12. They'll work from the left side hash mark. Hunter offset, lined up behind quarterback. Now there was movement at the line of scrimmage, apparently. A penalty yeah, penalty's thrown. Procedure will be the call against the Knights. Let's see what they had in that first half, Bill, as far as penalties. Marion, three penalties for 25 yards. St. Francis, three for 14 yards. Penalty moves the ball outside the 15 to the 16-yard line. Still first and, first and 10. They'll run the ball with Hunter off tackle and runs all the way inside the 15 to the 14. He had a big head of steam up. Not much penetration across the line of scrimmage that time by the Cougar defense. He ran through a couple tackles there too, Joe, so... Yeah, they're smearing, smelling blood in the water here, the Knights are. Got a lot of that penalty yardage back. It'll be second down and 11. Spotted at the 13-yard line. Two wide to the right side, including Jake Reichard, who ran for a touchdown out of the Wildcat. Here's Bundelo with motion now from the left side. They'll reach set. That's Stevens, I believe. And here is Hunter again that stood up and... Got penetration that time. I'm not sure who the linebacker was that got through there. I think that was C.J. Tanner that came up from uh, the secondary. Held on for dear life. They'll put that ball down. No gain. It'll be third down and 11. Can pick up a first down inside the three-yard line. Bundle old turns, looks to the sideline. Still 17 on the play clock. Spread offense now, too wide either side. We didn't see much of that in the first half. Hunter's offset to the left. Here's the throw. And wide open left side. And there is, I tell you what, that was a touchdown saving tackle. And I think that was Damon Hunter that came up and saved the short touchdown. Nobody came out on the wheel route to guard Christian Hunter. Came out of the backfield. And it'll be fourth down. They'll bring on Pomili, I believe, to attempt the X of the uh, three the field goal. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt from the left side hash mark. Trying to end to the four-point lead to make it seven. Kick is on the way, certainly long enough, and it is good. Advantage Marion now up a full touchdown, 17-10. 9.22 remains quarter number there's a flag. Let's let's there see. There is a flag. Yes. See what happened here. St. Francis staying on the field. Greg Santelli is our referee today, talking to his officials. A lot of times these situations, it's a dead ball foul after the kick and enforced on the kickoff. We will see. We're still waiting for an explanation. We'll hang on here. Cougar defense is coming back out. They're going to take points off the board. Personal foul, St. Francis. And it will be first and goal, Marion. So no touch or no field goal, but it's going to be first and goal inside the Cougar five at about the three. They bring Rankert in. He ran for a six-yard touchdown early on. Let's hope that uh, St. Francis defends a little better now against uh, Jack Rankert. And he looks to run right side and is down inside the one. And uh, did the ball pop free? Or did they score it? No, they scored. Just another determined run there by Rankert. Rankert from three yards out. 
Looked like St. Francis had him cleanly stopped. Time of the score at 9.15, so that adds additional points. Now are up now 10, and pending 11 by the extra point attempt by Marlon Pomili. Crowd quiets while we wait for the snap. Low snap kick is again long enough on the way, and it is good. Make it 21 for Marion, still 10 for the Cougars. And we're back after this for Current Mechanical. When the furnace or air conditioning goes out, it's not on your schedule or even a repair company's schedule. There is one name in heating and cooling that will make you a part of their schedule. Current Mechanical. Current Mechanical handles all heating, cooling, water heater, filter system, and geothermal needs, including replacements, repairs, and maintenance. With over 35 years in the heating and cooling business, Current Mechanical's response time is one of the best in the Fort Wayne area. Call Current Mechanical 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 420-8138. Current Mechanical. Keep it current. So for the Cougars, it's try, try again. Had a drive in the making. Fumble set up Marion. Then uh, trying to hold him to a field goal. There was a one of those senseless personal fouls that gave him new life. They took points off the board, but got it right back on a three-yard touchdown round by Jack Reichert, his second of the day. Now it's 21-10. And the Cougars... Well, they've got something now. They've got to get to going here, still with plenty of time left in this ball game. But this drive, I would think, Bill Scott's got to be very, very effective for St. Francis to have a chance to come back and win this football game at home. They've lost four straight times to the Marion Knights. Well, Coach Donnelly always preaches how you're going to react, so we're going to find out real quick here, Joe. Kick end over end comes up short. That'll be fielded at the 15. Run left side to the 20. McEachin, no, that's Ben Butler, across the uh, 25. Brought it out close to about the 30-yard line. We'll see where he stepped out of bounds. Again, decent field position for the Cougars to start this drive here, second possession of the third quarter. They'll spot it uh, at the 29-yard line, first and 10. McEachin comes out in the slot to the right side. Two wide, spread offense now. In fact, empty backfield first time we've seen that today. Here is seven steps up, throws to the middle. Peterson's got it at the 35. Short of the first down, goes to the 36-yard line. Good starting play on first down. That'll pick up about six, maybe seven. It'll be second down and still about three. Or are they going to spot that football up uh, at the 37-yard line? Second down and short. Still a lot of time, Joe. Yep. Just got to move the football. Kind of a weak uh, snap. Here's Peterson looking for running room. Didn't find much. Uh, don't think he got to the first down stick. Uh, held to just about a yard pickup. Peterson had seven carries for 43 yards in the first half. Had a couple of good runs in this uh, second half now. But it's third down and a yard. Got to get to... The 39 on this snap. Don't want to have to give the football back to the Knights. Running back offset to the left side of Heath Simmons out of the shotgun on the read option. Wants the throw on downfield and missed. Jay Siegel on the fly pattern. He had a step that time on the defender, Nate Fry. So it'll be fourth down, and uh, Jack Jones has got to come in to kick the ball away again. Missed opportunities for St. Francis. And mistakes. 7.55 remains here in quarter three. James to punt the ball from the Cougar 25. Jalen Jennings is back. Maybe looking at a bit of sunshine now. Uh, the wind has picked up as well. Kick end over end. Jennings will chase that down. Hits at the 21. Bounds inside the 10 and dives on it back at the five-yard line. And that is the very best of situations you could hope for in that fourth down situation for St. Francis. Yes, Marion will have the football, but buried way back inside their 10-yard line at about now they may put it down at the six. Was hoping he'd try to field that and uh, get a fortuitous bounce for the Cougars. Good job covering the ball there and 
nothing else he could do there. Now the situation for St. Francis. The defense has got to stand tall here. Isaiah Higgins checks in, left cornerback. Mundelo ready to take that snap out of the pistol at about the one-yard line. Hands the ball off. Here's a cut to the right side and knifing through there to the 10 is the running back, and that's Hebler that uh, is back in there. Baron Hebler, 5'9", sophomore, 185 pounds. That'll be a gain of three, second down and seven. Marion managing the clock right now inside seven and a half minutes time remaining. They'll back away with 20 on the play clock. A lot of time to check that St. Francis defense. Right now, just one safety back. They're defending against the run. Bundelo now resets tight end. They'll hand the ball off. And second effort, scooting through there. They've got a first down. That was Hebler. Cougars hit him initially back around the 10-yard line, but he just uh, had enough steam going forward and continued on. I'll mark him down across the 15 at the 18-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, he's just a sophomore, Joe. Here's Bundelow again. And off tackling, big hole again. And second level cutting to his right side, 35-40. And down right there, may not have got to the 40-yard line, but Hebler. Finally brought down by Isaiah Higgins. And Marion just picking it at, picking away at you. Well, they talk about those thousand paper cuts. And Hebler does not run like a sophomore, does he? It's out of Ron Colley High School in Indianapolis. First and 10 nearing midfield. Knights on the move. They lead it 21 to 10. St. Francis grabbed a 7-0 lead. Here's a ball that's off the fingertips. Incomplete that time. I believe that was uh, Jacob Pressler might have been the intended receiver out there. You can tell him because he's 6'4". <laughs> and stands about a helmet taller than anybody else out there. Incomplete pass. Stops the clock at 5.55. Remaining quarter number three. Sure he wishes he had another shot at that ball because that was a catchable pass. Fortunately for the Cougars, he didn't make the play. Play clock at the 11 now. Cougars adjust their defensive front line as well. Now a little reset by to the tight end position comes Ben Stevens, and they want to run the football into traffic that time. St. Francis is there to stop that very little gain that time. Only to the 40-yard line, so to bring up a third down and nine call, and this is where you've got to make a play. Got to stop him. Connor Price out there defensively. A.J. Moore, Talho made, made that last tackle. No question, you got him in third and long. Got to get to their own 49 on this snap. Shotgun formation this time for Zach Bundelow. Out of the gun, waits for the snap. Short drop, looking. Flush to his left side, got rid of it, completes the pass to Hebler. Hebler down the left sideline, stumbling out of bounds, but I think, he's, yes, he's got enough, enough yardage into Cougar territory inside midfield to the 48 of St. Francis, first and 10, Marion. And you just can't give up those plays. Bundelow did take a shot on that play. Cougars got to him, but unfortunately, he'd already gotten the pass away. First down, Marion. So now, Knights work into Cougar territory. Inside of five minutes, time remaining, quarter number three. Bundle leans forward, shouts something to his offensive line. Too wide to the right. They want to run the ball again, off tackle the right side. There's a hole, and closed quickly, but Hebler. Nice move, picks up five, maybe six yards. That was a big tackle that time. Didn't catch the number for St. Francis, but that number, might have saved a touchdown. Number 23, Nate Newcomer on the tackle, Joe. Big play by him. Gain of six. Second down and four now. Inside of four and a half minutes time remaining. Quarter number three. And the Knights doing exactly what they wanted to do here on the road in Fort Wayne. Grab the lead and then set on it and just pick up first downs. 
Bundalo out of the shotgun, now looking, looking, throws to the left side. He's got a man wide open, and he threw the ball too hot. Was that a throwaway? Well, I tell you, he has a touchdown if he can. I, I didn't see who was out there, but there was a night downfield that nobody for St. Francis in a silver helmet was anywhere near him. That is a huge break, and now it's third down and five. Once again, one of those situations, can the Cougars come up with a stop just one safety back everybody else comes up within about 10 yards of the line of scrimmage now they back away play clock at 12 bundalo sets up out of the shotgun cougar show blitz defensive right side here's bundalo short drop throws to the slots got a catch that time it went into the hands of jake reichard he's a freshman at 6-1 and enough yardage for another first down Isaiah Higgins had the coverage, made the stop, but too little, too late. Will Swartz checks back into the ball game for St. Francis. Kevin Ford also comes out there. Cougars trying to keep some fresher troops in with 335 remaining. And the clock being owned by Marion in this third quarter. They lead it by 11, 21-10 ball game. Two wide to the left. Bundalo. On the read option, drops the football, picks it up, hit as he throws the ball, and that one short hop. Two Cougars were there, including Damon Hunter. Bundalo took another big hit, but pops to his feet. That does stop the clock with 3.18 remaining here in quarter number three. Dakari Jones is just a split second late there, but he put a good hit on Bundalo. He's, he's been beat around here this series, Joe. Tough kid, though. He's still in there. 6'4", 235. That'll help you. Second down in 10 now. Clock stop with 318 on the incompleted pass. Stevens in the slot to the left side. you got to keep an eye on him. Cougars now drop two safeties back. Bundalo, long count. The play clock is at zero. Do they call a timeout? Greg Santelli will let us know. Apparently they did. Yep, timeout called by Marion. So we'll step out as well. Still 318 remaining quarter, 321 10 nights. This for current mechanical. When the furnace or air conditioning goes out, it's not on your schedule or even a repair company's schedule. There is one name in heating and cooling that will make you a part of their schedule. Current Mechanical. Current Mechanical handles all heating, cooling, water heater, filter system, and geothermal needs, including replacements, repairs, and maintenance. With over 35 years in the heating and cooling business, Current Mechanical's response time is one of the best in the Fort Wayne area. Call Current Mechanical 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 420-8138. Current Mechanical. Keep it current. With Bill Scott, Joe Parson here. Crowd very quiet at Darcy Stadium. Good crowd in attendance today. Mostly full on the near side and across the way. Marion has brought a big contingent of fans as well. But nobody's cheering much. <laughs> it's really a quiet stadium. Kind of surprising. I, that, that first series the Cougars had in fumble, and, and uh, that just took the wind out of the stadium, Joe. The Cougars looked like they were driving doing well and right around midfield everything turned on a like you said on a dime second down in 10 for the knights working from left to right they lead by 11 and they have it at the saint francis 36 yard line they'll stay with two wide to the left side bundle turns away still 18 on the play chop play clock got Riker at six four at six one a freshman wide to the right here's bundle with the snap wants to screen the ball has a catch. That Stevens, a nice play out in the flats that time. Was that Damon Hunter? Uh, would have been Dakari yep, Jones. Dakari Jones, number five. Well, I tell you what, he hurried out that time and prevented any kind of a gain. It'll be second down and 10. Third down and 10. That closing speed so important. Jones did a great job there yes, in the sir. open field. Yes, sir. Now they've got to get on this third down call inside the 30 to the uh, inside the 30 to the 26 yard line on this snap. And they're throwing into this crosswind that's uh, stiffening that flag that's out right. there by the scoreboard. Good observation. Here is a drop by Bundalo. Throws over the middle. It's got a catch. That's got to be Ben Stevens from the slot position inside the 20 down to the 17. And he has been a cougar killer the last couple of years. 
comes up limping a little bit. Kevin Ford in on the stop, the freshman for St. Francis, but here they come. The Knights driving again inside the red zone. Big third and long pickup there for the Knights. By the way, that was Reichard actually that made that catch. Came up limping a little bit after the catch. So Bundelow now dropping the throw again. Looks right side, throws to a spot. He's got the catch made. That was Pressler. Looked like almost he was dropping the football, but he held on. That's inside again of the 15-yard line down to about the 11. And the 1,000 paper cuts continue by Marion just picking away at USF. Reichert stays in wide to the right. Pressler moves out wide to the left. Let's see if they go back to Hebler, Bill. Wouldn't surprise me here, Joe, the way he's been running the ball today. Bundelow looks away. Play clock inside of 10 now, down to 9. We've got a minute 18 remaining in this third quarter. Now they'll reset tight to the left side as Bundle hands the ball off. He, the ball is free. Who's going to scramble for it? St. Francis has got it. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Didn't see who came up with the ball. Laban or Dakari Jones. Dakari Jones with the fumble recovery there for the Cougars. That new, is new huge. life. That is huge. Keeps it 21-10. USF will have it first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Minute six remains, quarter three in all of the fourth quarter. But you've got to start moving the football now. Empty backfield for Heath Simmons. He drops. He looks. Throws to the right side. And the screen, Cameron Peterson across the 25, out to the 30-yard line for a first and 10. Clock stops with 59 seconds remaining. Cougars hurry back to huddle up briefly. And they'll have it at their own 31-yard line, first and 10. 17 yards on that play for Cam. Nice open field run there. Get some good yardage. Get some momentum back for the Cougars. Dandridge in wide to the right side. Siegel comes out wide left. I believe that's Ben Butler in, in the slot to, slot to the left side. Here's the play action. Fake Simmons uh, in traffic. And that one, is, is it going to be intercepted? It is. Are they going to rule it a pick? Grabbed off the turf. Did not catch the number. That one sailed over the head of the intended receiver. It will be Marion football on a giveaway by St. Francis, and the Knights will have it at their own 46. Peyton Trexler, a uh, redshirt senior out of Wabash, Indiana, played for Southwood. Joe made the pick on that play. A real nice uh, interception there, way overthrown on the play by Heath Simmons. The little things, the tough. little things that get you. Another tough break for the Cougars. Some point you got to make your own breaks. Absolutely. They've had them though. They've had two interceptions earlier today. This fumble recovery here. Just have not been able to cash in. Now Christian Hunter's come back in as the running back and he angles to his left and near midfield. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. We're down to 15 seconds remaining. Marion walking very slowly. They keep the offensive unit out there. And for some reason, the clock stopped with 15, and now suddenly it's down to five. And that is going to do it. This will be the end of the third quarter with uh, Marion on top. 21-10, headed to quarter four. We're coming back right after this. You're listening to Cougar Football on WGL News Radio 1250, 105.5 FM. And this for Game 1. Game 1 is the premier provider of apparel, uniforms, and equipment, unifying teams and fans in schools, clubs, and organizations. From our partnerships with teams and organizations to our work and dedication to the communities around us, we never stop. Striving to help you take on every day, season, and competition with excitement and purpose. Visit game-one.com to learn more about our apparel, equipment, and fan gear offerings. Game 1. Your first contact for all things game. 
Everyone knows that winter is coming, and when it does come, it's the wind and cold air that really chill your home. Momper insulation can keep the cold out by sealing the leakage points and filling empty sidewalls, even through masonry or siding, without unsightly holes or blemishes. They're also experts at insulating crawl spaces, attics, and any place the cold could get in and ruin your winter. Let Momper seal your house, saving you 30 to 50% off your heating bill. Call today for a free energy audit before it's too late. Momper Insulation. With Bill Scott, I'm Joe Parson. We're back to action. Second down and a long five for Marion. Now dropping the throw. The screen comes up in the flats right side. That is caught by Stevens. Stevens legs it down the right sideline inside the Cougar 40, 35, and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. That defense has been out there a lot here, Joe. It is, looks like they're starting to wear down a little bit. It's also so deflating when, uh, you know, you're, you're losing the ball on mistakes that uh, you're making. Yeah, it's frustrating when you force the other team into making mistakes and you cannot compromise. Comp, comp, yeah, easy for me to say. <laughs> Capitalize. Capitalize. That's the word. Here's the play action fake and bundle of the throw. Pumps, pumps, throws it down the right side. That time missed the little square out pattern that time. Ben Stevens was the intended receiver. The Cougars have not scored since the first half. Took an early 7-0 lead, led 10-7 on a 22-yard field goal by Jack James, and they've been silent ever since. Now it's 21-10 in favor of the Knights. And they'll have second down and 10 at the USF 30-yard line. Moving right to left. 14-19 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Play action fake. They will give it off, and there's the run. Christian Hunter nearly broke free as it is. Worked off tackle to the right side inside the Cougar 25. Took it down to about the 23, maybe the 22-yard line, and it'll bring up a third down and short call, third and a couple. Knights will work from the right side hash mark. Don't forget St. Francis, three of their next four games on the road starting next week. 12 noon kickoff at Indiana Wesleyan. Three wide, trips package wide to the left side, including Ben Stevens. He's in the slot to the near side, but they throw the ball on the screen, and boy, that was well defended that time by St. Francis with that Damon Hunter. It was. Read it perfectly and nailed Stevens. They were trying to set up a screen, bubble screen near side. No luck. And that brings up fourth down. Now a decision for Mark Henninger. Do you go for three? Do you have the leg from Pumile to hit about, what, a 40? They're going to keep the offensive unit on, trying to reach the USF 20-yard line on this play. And it looks like they're going back. Uh, no, they keep uh, quarterback Zach Mundelo in the game. Looks to throw, drops, looks, dances, throws over the middle. He's got a catch. Big hit that time. The ball's free. Scramble was fourth down. They're not going to get it either way. Either an incomplete pass, and I mean that was a hit of the game that time by St. Francis. No doubt about it. Well, number 48 comes up big again. Nate tell him. He's going to tell him about that play for a while. <laughs> well, that's something that St. Francis needed desperately. They'll take over first and 10. Looks like they'll have it at the their own 26-yard line. You could feel that tackle up here, couldn't you, Joe? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a cavity revel rattling tackle. McEachin comes in wide left. 13-0-1 remains. Cougars with the ball down 11 here at home. First things first. Motion now near side by Eli Patchett rushes coming. Simmons gets away from one, steps up, buying time, throws near side. That ball... Was it caught by Patchett? Or did he catch it off the... No, they rule it incomplete. Patchett pleading. Said, I, I got my body underneath. <laughs> well, A lot talk, of confusion They're going to talk to Greg Santelli about it. Was there a penalty? Officials, there was uh, a flag it, thrown, but... I don't know what the penalty would be unless there was a holding or... Maybe that's uh, prevent, you know, Kevin Donnelly talking to one of the officials. Penalties have not really been a big factor today for either team. 
But turnovers certainly have. The U.S. has had enough of them. They've just not capitalized on them. Now we're going to get the ruling. Maybe. Legal downfield. Is that the call against St. Francis? Loss of down. Crowd doesn't like that call. Beyond the line of scrimmage, maybe, when he threw that pass? I don't know. But it will be second down and 10 with the ball still at the 26. Yeah, unfortunately, his field mic's not working. It's been sporadic at best today. How unusual. <laughs> Here we go, Siegel. Wide left. They're dropping off in coverage on him. Three wide to the left side. Simmons looks, throws the home run. Then that one, I tell you, that was McEachin tried to adjust on the ball. Kind of floated on Heath Simmons that time. Incomplete. And here we go. It's third down and long. Did not look like there was clear communication that time between passer and receiver. Oh, and he had a little pressure coming off the edge there, too. Got to get out to the 36-yard line on this snap of the football. Plenty of time remains. 12:49. Siegel again with McEachin. Part of a trips package. Wide left. That's the wide side of the field. And spread offense. Empty backfield now for Heath Simmons. Taking a look. Play clock is down inside of five. Here's the snap. Simmons looks. Steps up and bit as he throws. It was his arm going forward. They rule it incomplete pass. And fourth down. And another opportunity missed by St. Francis. They'll have to kick the football away. They're going to rule that a sack against Simmons. He took a tough hit in the back and blindsided Jake Paris on the play there. Against these better teams, Bill, Cott, Bill Scott, you, you just do not have the, enough time. They've got to be quick decisions, quick execution. Screens are very effective. We've seen Cameron Peterson a number of times today on the receiving end. Now Jack James inside his 15 will punt it away. Marion waits inside their 35. Rush comes, kick, low line drive. Did they get James? He's down. There's a penalty flag, and St. Francis may get the ball back. You know, sometimes you're going to play college football, you've got to be a little bit of an actor, too, and enhance the things that are going on. Greg Santelli bought it, though, the referee. James, a savvy veteran punter <laughs> for him, Joe, and uh, that's acting. He well, did get hit, though. I mean, he did get hit. They're going to rule it running into the kicker, though. That's just a five-yard walk-off if I read that penalty correct. And if that's the case, St. Francis may take the punt and decline the penalty. Or change their mind. Maybe they'll still have fourth down and maybe run a play. Well, let's vote on it. What runs through the mind of Kevin Donnelly in this situation? Now, now they rule it. Personal foul. It will be first down, St. Francis. Okay. Santelli, first of all, ruled running into the kicker. Then changed it to roughing. Or do they? Defense is coming out. I'm confused. Looks like Marion's going to have the football where it was punted to, and that's at their own 38-yard line, first and 10. Glad to have you join the party, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I've got you up here to explain what's going on. We're the blind leading the blind. So bundle those back uh, on the field for Marion. 12.35 remains. Running back lined up behind him. Waiting for that snap, and uh, they'll hand it off, and there's good tackling by St. Francis. Stop is made at the 39 that time. Hebler got the call. You talked about earlier, Bill Scott, that uh, Baron Hebler, tough runner. Uh, they did a good job, Schwartz and uh, Scheffelberger, of, of bottling him up that play. Just a short one-yard gain there. Second down and nine, but more importantly, the clock moves on. And probably inside 12 minutes before the snap of the football. 
That's a couple of veterans saying, I'm tired of seeing you running the ball like that. Shotgun formation. Bundalo on the read option. Hands it off. No, he faked the ball. Pulled, now threw it away. Good decision. And there's, you see, the smarts of uh, the redshirt junior, Zach Bundalo, that knew he was in trouble. Two Cougars in his face, and he just sailed that football about three rows deep on the Marion sidelines. Joey Schaufelberger putting the pressure on him, uh, the 6'5 uh, senior from Van Wert. Good job there. Third down and nine. Marion trying to reach their own 48 on this snap. Clock did stop with 11.52. Marion's been very effective, though, on these third down and long situations all day long, especially in the second half. And they weren't bad in the first half. Three for six. Bundalo taking a lot of time. They've not even marked the ball ready for play, however. Now finally do. Clock did stop. 11.52 remains. Shotgun formation. Zach bundalo has got it. Short drop looking. Being pursued. Steps out. Screens the ball right side. Hebler has got the first down midfield and tripped up at the USF 45. Talholm got an ankle on him, enough to knock him off his pins. But again, another conversion on third and long for the Marion Knights. Marion's 5 for 11 on third down uh, conversions right now, 45%. Cougars are just one of eight. St. Francis has had all kind of problems today picking up that running back coming out into the flats. First and 10. Do they want to run the ball? They will. Hebler cracks his way inside the USF 40-yard line. They'll take it down inside the 39. They're going to give them a good spot of the ball at the 38. He'll gain three yards, keep that clock moving. It'll move inside of 11 minutes before the snap of the football. U.S. desperately needs a takeaway. Bundle Oak, long count for minus scrimmage. Play act. No, he did hand it off to Hebler. It works left side. Got a good block that time from the left side tackle. And rolls inside the USF 35 down to the 34 at least. Maybe the 33. Close to the first down. A little bit short. Now they mark it at the 34. But uh, was there a penalty thrown? Penalty flag. Didn't see one. Officials talking, and we're going to get the call right now from Greg Santelli. Personal foul, face mask, St. Francis. <laughs> you know, when it rains, it pours. Not so much today at Dorsey Stadium. Sunshine, but the penalties have hurt St. Francis when it counts most. Penalty moves the ball inside the 20 down to the 18-yard line. So the Knights at 10:31 knocking on the door again in the red zone, trying to add to their 21-10 lead. Motion right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Stevens resets, and they'll run that way with Hebler. Hebler off tackle, runs into a gauntlet, and maybe got a yard to the 17. But more importantly, keeps that clock moving. Schaufelberger credited with the stop. Marion with a new tight end into the game right now. That's uh, Drew Byerly. 230-pound junior tight to the left side. Trips package wide right. Play action fake. Here's a throw to the corner, and that's up for a touchdown. Pressler, I got to believe. A touchdown that time for 17 yards. Beat his defender. So add points at the 940 mark. And the Knights pulling away here in the fourth quarter. Bundle all the time in the world that time to wait until the pattern cleared. St. Francis has not scored in the second half. Led early on 7 0. Bomili on to try to make it a 28 10 ball game. Got to rue those missed opportunities. Right footed kick blocked at the line of scrimmage. 
And that uh, they're going to try to run it out. And down the right side to the 10, there's a oh. penalty flag thrown. There was a couple of flags that actually thrown on the play. And so, call it an illegal block. I'm sure. So it'll stay 27 to 10. We'll get the definition. They will be after the extra point is good or blocked, I should say. No good on the kick. And probably we'll see an enforcement on the kickoffs. But 940 remains, 27-10, and we're coming back right after this for Northwestern Mutual. When it comes to financial planning, most financial companies ask, what's your salary? At Northwestern Mutual, we ask, what's your story? We know building the right financial plan means more than looking at money. That's why Landon Myers starts by asking the right questions and listening to what matters most to you. Then guiding you every step of the way to help you live the life you want now and years from now. You can plan your financial story through Landon Myers and Northwestern Mutual. Contact Landon at 260-318-2132. Let's see how our team can best benefit your team. Northwestern Mutual is the marketing name for Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, NM, and its subsidiaries in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Landon Myers is an insurance agent of NM. For additional information, please visit landonmyers.nm.com. Vishal still huddled up. Everybody in stripes. Looks like a convention down there in the corner. Meanwhile, the Marion kickoff team is already on the field. Let's see if we get the explanation. <laughs> well, Cougar crowd reacts to something they didn't want to hear. Blindside block, Sesta Dent against USF. That, uh, I'm sure, will uh, affect the kickoff for Marion. We'll see where they'll kick from. Looks like, uh, well, the official will mark it off from the 35. 15 yard penalty to midfield. Mark Henniger might be tempted to go on side with his team, only up 27 to 10. They've got the number 10 ranking in the NAIA. Ben Butler and uh, Crosley McEachin back in uh, kick return. They should not have an opportunity if Pomili buries this uh, kick into the end zone. But again, uh, on side is always a potential out there. Well, it doesn't get any easier for St. Francis. Next week, 12 noon at uh, down in Marion, taking on Indiana Wesleyan. They're ranked number five after that upset victory last week down at Marion. That tells you what the St. Francis will be in store for next week. They've got to play better. They had the opportunities today, but came away empty in the second half. They do pooch the ball near side. That's a free ball and does go out of bounds. That's a break for St. Francis. They'll take it. First and 10 at their own 35. Sometimes you look a gift horse in the mouth and it doesn't pay dividends for you. They were hoping to bury St. Francis back inside the 10. Instead, it'll be first and 10 Cougars at their own 35. Let's see if we can bring you up to date on any other scores. Meantime, the USF uh, offense, maybe Bill Scott can take a look and see what's going on elsewhere. Here it's 27-10. Further discussions on the sidelines. Joey Didier's pointing, and there may be a further explanation. No, he said the 20-yard line. That's not correct. That's That's got to go to the 35, right? That's what I thought, too, Joe. I... What is going on? Well, I can tell you Concordia and at Taylor, they're tied 14-14. Keep scrolling down. See what else you find. Wesleyan 7 nothing at Lawrence Tech. Let's see if I can get an update on that one there. Got a feeling that's changed. Bill, I don't know. Have the rules changed that much? 
Uh, St. Francis now coming off the field. Both, both teams are going off the field. So officials have kind of lost control of the game at this point. I thought a kick out of the bounds, you take it first and you have the choice to either require a re-kick or take it at the 35. Referee said first and 10 USF at the 20. That's not where the ball went out of bounds, I don't believe. Are they going to have a do-over here? Apparently, again, I think what Joey did here and the coaches said, well, if you're going to force us to take at the 20, we'll, we'll ref make them kick the ball over again from the 45. So that's what uh, culminated out all that, all that confusion that <laughs> took quite a while as we're now 20 minutes after 2 o'clock Eastern time. This time from their own 45-yard line. USF trying to make sure they've got 11 men out there. It really helps when you've got 11. Well, I think they've totally missed this play here. Uh, that ball should be at the 35. I... Maybe there's a new rule. They do change things. Here's the kick, driving kick. That'll go into the end zone. And now it will come out first and 10. They got a tough job, and you, yeah. you try not to be too hard on them, but, boy, when they do something like this, I mean, you got the fans all stirred up, and well, Bill, there's I so go, much confusion. I that, still go back to the second trip to Tennessee for the national championship when Carroll beat St. Francis on a, just a blown call by the official on the third down, what was supposed to be a field goal, never came about, the holder spiked the ball. He can't do that. Only the quarterback can spike the ball. In a championship game. In a game. championship game, they never knew that rule. And the ball, and that one was merely, nearly deflected and intercepted. It was intended for Cameron Peterson, but he couldn't get, to, he was locked up in the middle of the line, and that was nearly disaster. Oh, that was dangerous, too. Cam was twisting around if somebody would have hit him. Cougars with a quick start today and then a fizzle in the second half. Jay Siegel wide to the left. McKeachin, part of a trips package out that way. Empty backfield now. Short drop. Simmons looks and too much time. And he's going down. No, and now he does. Back inside the 20. Number five on the tackle there for Marion. Defensive nice end. Sticking with it. Deion Pettiford came in leading the Knights with three sacks. Big loss of about six yards. So the ball way back now inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. you got to get out to the 35 on this snap. Got to make quicker decisions or throw it away. Cannot take sacks. Marion's got a three-man front. Here's a quick throw. The screen is there, but nothing much is there. Again, it's only across the 20 to the 23. A little safety valve play and getting up slowly. Is that Siegel down on his back? Now twisting around in some obvious pain. So we're going to have an injury timeout. Yes, unfortunately, that's Jay. Stoppage of play. This injury timeout brought to you by Parkview Sports Medicine winning combination with the NAIA. And we're back right after this for Parkview Ortho Express. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express walk-in clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart virtual walk -in in clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260-266-4007 for more. Still working on Siegel down on the field. Didn't look like there was heavy contact, but maybe just was awkwardly. Now Jade hops to his feet and uh, limping uh, noticeably, trying to kind of shake it off. Limping but uh, headed to the sidelines, basically under his own power. That would be a big loss, though, for St. Francis to lose that talented individual for the rest of the way. Meanwhile, it's fourth down and 11, so Jack James comes on to punt the ball away. Marion won back in punt return at their own 35, and still over nine minutes remaining in this football game. Cougars have not been able to manage much offensively in the second half. 
No rush. Kick us away. That was off the side of the foot and hits uh, across midfield. Trickles out of bounds at about the Marion 48. Not your typical Jack James punt. And it'll put Marion in pretty good field position now with 847 remaining in this football game. And Marion, the first of two road games today, starting today. They'll be up in Michigan next uh, Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor to take on Concordia's Cardinals. They'll spot it at the 47. Now the Knights uh, work from right to left as we look at it. C.J. Young checks in, the lone wide flank to the near side, one wide to the right. Got to believe that they'll have a steady diet of runs right now, run that clock, and they do right here. And that's a great field a tackle in the backfield. Moore came in there. Great play. A.J. Moore read it, dived in there, and it's a loss of a couple. You know, the, the, defense is, yes. the Cougars' defense has just been on the field so much today, and yet they're still giving it 120%. Loss is back to the 45-yard line, second down and 12 now, but the clock a factor inside eight and a half minutes. Three wide to the left side for Marion now. Bundle has gone all the way today at quarterback. And looks on the read option, does hand it off, and here's Hunter bobbing and weaving, works his left side across midfield into Cougar territory, down to about the 46-yard line. That's three yards, maybe four yards shy of the first down stick. Ford on the uh, tackle for St. Francis, the freshman. Now you got to keep them from picking up the first down. They've got to reach the USF 43 on this snap. Trips package is wide right this time. With 7.40 and clock continuing to tick away. Play clock inside of 15. Bundalo ready to call the play now. Waiting for that snap of the football on the read option. Once to did hand it off and they've got another first down. Gain will be inside the 43. Not quite to the 42. They only needed well, the, the spot of the football by about four inches. But enough to move the chains. And it's been, that really says the way the second half has gone today. That's for sure. Marion's been able to run the ball, pretty much do what they've wanted to do offensively. I guess what really impresses me, Bill, is on the third and longs, they've been able to come up big virtually every time they've had third and long, at least in the second half. Now they have a tight formation. And they'll hand the ball off, and here is Hunter off tackle, runs into a wall, reach the Cougar 40, and that is going to be that with 6.44 to play. Got a couple score updates. Joe Concordia at Taylor, 14-14 at the half. Wesleyan at the half leads Lawrence, at Lawrence Tech, 14 to nothing. Uh, St. Xavier's outscored Missouri Baptist 17 nothing to take a 17-3 lead. Uh, it's now 17-10. Tightening up a little bit in those, that game. Cougar show blitzed, possibly defensive right side. Hunter runs off tackle, upended, short of the first down. Got to about the 36-yard oh, line. I think that's where we're going to spot it. Again, it's going to be one of those big third down calls. Third down. Third down and about, let's call it a long three. River Walsh on that tackle, and heck, the guy still dove two yards in the air. Knight's not ready to take the snap yet. They'll look back to the sidelines. Play clock still at 15. They have been expert at managing the clock here today on the road. Bundalo hands it to 100, trying to go wide right. It's not going to get there enough. Knocked down outside the Cougar 35. They'll bring up fourth down situation. And they may well go for it right now, leading uh, by 27 to 17, up by 17 points, fourth and about two. Too far for a field goal attempt, I got to believe. I hate to beat a dead horse, but Marion has played much more with much more confidence ever since they got that turnover and scored to uh, go up 20 to 10. Offset to the left side is the running back as Bundelow backs away. Still nine now on the play clock, got a hurry. Still kind of, uh, they may take the penalty. We're down inside of three. And they're either calling a timeout. The play clock ran out. Didn't see any indication for a timeout. They'll take the penalty, I believe, and then punt the ball. Or did they call a timeout? Evidently somebody called a timeout. Greg Santelli hasn't given any indication. 
I was just watching the uh, main clock on the scoreboard. It went from five minutes to four four fifty eight. Right now it shows four fifty four. So it skipped a minute, a second there. You know the the timing on these machines. I, I we see it at Spooler Stadium too. It's all transmitted by, is it internet? Blue. It's a the, Bluetooth. I, I I think that sometimes but, there's an issue. Yeah, there is a lag sometimes. Yeah. And it looks like Marion did take the timeout. They've got one left. St. Francis, all three of theirs. And it is going to be fourth and two. They de do keep the offense on. Got a new running back in there, I believe. A pistol alignment now for Bundelo. Needs a couple backs away. No, it's Christian Hunter still. Play clock at 13. Fourth down and two. They're going to run a play. Here's the handoff, and they don't get it. Finally, a fourth down stop by St. Francis. Actually, their second fourth down stop of the day. But is it too little too late with 4.51 remaining? River Walsh with the tackle there for the Cougars. St. Francis will get the ball back first and 10. And they'll work from their own 36-yard line. Well, can you score 17 points in just under five minutes? I'm, I suppose it's happened, but uh, you got to have some success, success and quickly, I would think. Absolutely. Empty backfield again. Simmons has got to be quick. Short drop. Here comes the rush. Steps up. He's got time. Throws to a spot, and that one is nobody home. Boy, there were three nights in the vicinity of their 41-yard line. And no blue jersey in the area. I believe that was... DeWan Langston, the intended receiver, but he was 10, 15 yards away from where that throw landed. Miscommunication there. Things not going well here down the stretch with 444 to play. Short drop, Simmons taking a lot of time, throws right side, there's the catch, short of the first down. McKeachin high-pointed high pointed the ball, made a nice play on it. Didn't give him the best spot in the world up around the 44. So that'll bring up a third down and long two situation. Cougars have got to reach their own 46, or 36, I should. Here's the throw right side. That ball is caught, and they and did the ball get fumbled away? Oh and Murray's got it back. That was an unforced turnover. Ball was caught and then dropped. Campbell kept... One of the Cougars got involved over in the far. There's a, <laughs> that's about a 30-foot uh, penalty flag thrown up in the air. I think Dandridge got involved in some extracurriculars across uh, the Marion sidelines. That's not a place you want to be. So a 413 wheels falling off. But that was bizarre. The ball was caught for a first down, and then suddenly it was just laying on the ground. I was trying to determine who caught that ball. It's on the far sideline. It was hard to see. Yeah, at the 49 of Marion. Well, the Mike's not working for the referee. Un personal foul against St. Francis. Well, there are days like this. You just want to get in your car, get home, grab a cold one, take a shower, and think about Sunday. Just trying to review the uh, replay on uh, Summit City Sports, but I got in there too late to get a look at it. Ball will be after the penalty to the 36 of St. Francis, first and 10. Kind of sums up this second half for the Cougars in a nutshell, Joe. They make a nice play, and then and then something happens. Yeah just have not responded well at all in the second half. Motion now, C.J. Young resets. They want to run the ball off tackle right side. There's Hebler and works his way down to the USF 30, maybe a little bit lower. Ball got thrown away that time after the play. And they'll mark it the gain of about six at the 30-yard line. C.J. Tanner in on the stop for St. Francis.
But as they say, the horse has definitely left the barn. With 340 remaining, just a academic what the final score will be. Mary may want more after that gain of six. And here's the give again. Hebler bounces off a tackler, then finally is brought down right at the 30-yard line. That, for a moment, looked like if he could get free to his right, he might have a chance to go all the way. A nice tackle over there by one of the Cougars. They'll spot the ball, gain of one, third down and three coming up, a long three. And they'll still work from the right side hash mark with just over three minutes remaining. A lot of time on the play clock, still 14. Well, what will this week be like in practice for St. Francis? Next headed to Indiana Wesleyan, the team that beat Marion last week. Here's a run straight ahead, short of the first down, stick by a yard. It'll bring up fourth and one, fourth and short. It'll make for a tough week, if nothing else, on just the fact that you had some opportunities in this game to at least take the lead. You know, you still might not win, but you had chances to, to take a lead, you know, get some momentum going, get the crowd into the game, and instead things didn't go your way. Marion came up with the big plays when they needed to. Take a quick time out and hear this for Shelter Insurance. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. In Northeast Indiana, contact Brandon Scott Shelter Insurance at 342 Enterprise Drive, Warsaw, Indiana, or call 574-376-4448. And if you're the head coach, uh, Kevin Downley, with a lot of questions to be answered, do you make a quarterback change? Is that the solution? Luke Robertson, uh, at times, has played effectively. Prince Powell, he's in the rotation now. We haven't seen him today. In fact, uh, Heath Simmons has gone all the way. Now they're going to attempt a 43-yard field goal by Pomili on the way. He's got a chance, and it is good. 43-yard field goal, add points on the board at the 236 mark. So let's make it a 30-10 to 10 lead for Marion University here on the road, and we'll be back with this for the coach. This time of year, everyone is thinking football. And now there's a special opportunity to grab a copy of Fort Wayne's legendary coach, Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. At the University of St. Francis, Coach D's Cougars captured back-to-back -back national championships in 2016 and 2017. His new book reveals over 40 years of coaching trials and tribulations, as well as the ability to overcome personal adversity and challenges. Snap the Whistle, a perfect gift idea if you're truly a football fan. Get a personally autographed copy in the USF football office. Also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. Cougars back in a kick return formation. They've got Ben Budler back there along with Crosley McKeach, and they wait inside the 15 at the 10. Still 236 remaining. A lot of the crowd, even the Cougar crowd, has stuck around here through this uh, grim second half. Joe, I got a score update at Lawrence Tech. Indiana Wesleyan 14 to 7 with 11-14 to go in the third quarter. Cougars at Indiana Wesleyan next Saturday. This was a 7-7 tied, 7-35 of the first quarter. Cougars actually led 10-7. Now here comes the kick return across the 15. Not much more. Maybe Ben Butler gets out to the uh, 16. A lot of distance, a lot of green between the Cougars and the opponent's goal line. First and 10. Cameron Peterson comes back out there. And Heath Simmons going to go all the way today. Mark it at the 16. Here's Simmons wanting to throw, throws over the middle left side. Nice delivery, and then a ball popped free, and still free. Marion does have it. They may rule that no catch, however. Incompletion. 
And Marion still hitting hard. That time a ball caught and then coughed up almost immediately. Joe Bundelow now 16 for 25 passing, 172 yards. Big second half for Bundelow, 100 yards passing here in the second half for uh, Marion. Second down in 10, stole the ball at the USF 16-yard line. And now they're backing up. Another penalty apparently assessed against the silver and blue. No, they they just they just spotted the ball wrong. Then they finally brought it back to the 16. I think even the officials are getting a little tired today. Here's Simmons to throw, short and being pursued. Steps out of one tackle, works to his left, dumps it off. Gain is to the 20, out to the 25. Ball rolls free, but uh, the whistle had blown. And all of a sudden, St. Francis can't hold on to the football. Now it's not affected him a couple of times of late. That was Dandridge with the catch. A gain of... Uh, He's still chirping over there at the Marion sideline. He's better be careful. Third down and short. Got to get it now. Here's Simmons to throw. Pumps. Puts it. McEachin's got the catch. Holds on. Took a double hit. That was almost a late hit by Marion that time. Logan Blake came over, I thought, a little bit late. But no penalty. And it's all academic inside of two minutes now. They do pick up the first down. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. Simmons now 18 for 32, 97 yards passing. Here comes the rush and hit from behind. Ball tipped high in the air. Who will get it? And it's going to be a pick six. Deflected high and return will go for 25 yards and a touchdown for the Knights. Interception, and that sums up the day for St. Francis. Yeah, that's definitely the exclamation mark for the uh, Knights there. That uh, hit somebody in the helmet, bounded high in the air. And the Knights cherry-picking that with the return. That may have been Jalen Lockett with the interception in return for a touchdown, the uh, Northside High School graduate. Pomili on to add the extra point. And now the crowd begins to head to the exits. 36-10. And some of the coaches, too. Extra point on the way, and that is good. That will make it 37 to 10. And we've got word coming up one more time for the coach. This time of year, everyone is thinking football. And now there's a special opportunity to grab a copy of Fort Wayne's legendary coach, Kevin Donnelly's new book, Snap to Whistle. At the University of St. Francis, Coach D's Cougars captured back-to-back -back national championships in 2016 and 2017. His new book reveals over 40 years of coaching trials and tribulations, as well as the ability to overcome personal adversity and challenges. Snap the Whistle, a perfect gift idea if you're truly a football fan. Get a personally autographed copy in the USF football office, also available at Amazon, Apple Books, and Barnes & Noble. Well, since that 10-7 lead by USF, it's been a run of 30 straight points now by Marion on the road here, and they lead it 37-10 with 142 remaining to be played. This will be the fifth straight win for the Knights against St. Francis. Last year, it was 56-10 loss in Indianapolis. Now the mindset for St. Francis, get ready for Indiana Wesleyan. High end over end kick, that will go in and then inside the five return, 10-15. And they will not get out to the 20 yard line with 97 seconds remaining. So that's five straight Franciscan Bowl wins for Marion here in this series definitely a tough pill for the Cougars to swallow interesting all the first time first team members for St. Francis are out there but no substitution this may be as much as a penalty uh, a punishment as a, as a move by the coaches staff Good run this time across the 20-yard uh, line out to about the 23, 24. No, they're going to say the knee hit back at the 21. That'll be a pickup of about three. 
Mercifully, the clock continues to move, approaching one minute, time remaining. Corners come up and press coverage out there. They'll hand the ball off, off tackle run. That only gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe plus one to the 21. And now we're inside a minute. It's number 36 with the carry, but if you go by the roster, 36 is two defensive players. 36, I think that's Ryan Walsh, the brother of River Walsh. Had four care at 11 carries for 22 yards last week. Third down and seven, and the USF, uh, they're trying to take as much time as they can off the clock. He's carrying the ball well for a linebacker. <laughs> and they'll run again. That nets very little, but takes the clock for the final 20 seconds. And they won't even need to run another team, another snap of the football, and this one will go into the books as Heath Simmons heads to the sidelines. Very frustrated, dejected, I'm sure. And this one goes into the win column for the Marion Knights. Final will be 37 to 10. And we're coming back with our postgame show. And it'll all start right after this for Ortho Express. Dealing with joint pain, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Ortho Express gives you access to expert orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatments, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. You can even see ortho providers virtually through the Parkview MyChart Virtual Walk-In Clinic. Visit us at our new location in Huntington, next to the Kroger. Ortho Express is open Monday through Friday. Call 260 266 4007 for more. Everyone knows that winter is coming, and when it does come, it's the wind and cold air that really chill your home. Momper insulation can keep the cold out by sealing the leakage points and filling empty sidewalls, even through masonry or siding, without unsightly holes or blemishes. They're also experts at insulating crawl spaces, attics, and any place the cold could get in and ruin your winter. Let Momper seal your house, saving you 30 to 50% off your heating bill. Call today for a free energy audit before it's too late. Momper Insulation. Lumberg Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram knows that sometimes it just makes more sense to buy used. Every purchase is different. Every buyer has a specific need. But that doesn't mean you have to settle for a poor, depleted selection of vehicles on some shady corner lot. There's no need to get frustrated driving from dealership to dealership, confronted by hard sell lot Larrys trying to hustle you into a bad deal on a high mileage vehicle. That's because Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram has a massive selection of factory-backed certified pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs, and a finance approval plan to get you into the vehicle you want. Credit issues, divorce, bankruptcy? No worries. We've got the banks, we've got the loan officers, we've got the financing. Don't run all over town. Just run on down to Coliseum under the giant American flag. You can still have a big dealership experience even when buying a pre-owned ride at Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Always online at GlenbrookDodge.com. You're listening to USF Football on WGO. News Radio 1250 and 105.5. With Bill Scott, I'm Joe Parson. Welcome back to Darcy Stadium. Well, we saw a little bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly today as uh, St. Francis started very well. They got a four-yard uh, touchdown run from Cam Peterson at the 10:03 mark. Things were looking good. He w virtually walked into the end zone. Nobody even laid a glove on him. And uh, the Cougars feeling good about themselves. They had a 7-0 lead. And uh, that would be uh, short-lived as uh, the Wildcat run by Marion, a six-yard touchdown run by Jack Reichard, the first of two touchdowns that he had today. Uh, at the 7.35, Mark Pomili added the extra point. We were tied at 7-7. But again, the Cougars would capitalize on a black punt. They would take over at the Marion 17. That would set up a 22-yard field goal by Jack James at the 14.50 mark in uh, quarter number two. So St. Francis, again, looking good. They had a 10-7 lead. And then you might as well have just left because uh, the, we, just 
was utter frustration for St. Francis fans the rest of the way. They had their opportunities. Interception would give them an opportunity at the Marion 49. They couldn't move the football as Damon Hunter came up with the interception. Instead, it would be a two-yard Hebler touchdown run with 12 seconds, or was it 10 seconds, remaining in the first half. Anyway, it would be the Knights going to the halftime dressing room, leading it 14-10, to and then all Marion in the second half. They would capitalize on a fumble recovery, set, setting up Reichert again for a three-yard touchdown run at the 9-13 mark. And an interception by C.J. Tanner would uh, give uh, USF a chance but couldn't score points. Instead, in the fourth quarter, all kinds of uh, bundalo to Pressler for a 17-yard touchdown at the 9-40 mark. They would get a 43-yard field goal from uh, Pomili at the 236 mark. And then uh, the final harm with a minute 42 remaining, a pick six interception, and the extra point to make it 37 to 10. Coach Kevin Downley with his team gathered around at midfield. They were shooing everybody else away. He would love to be a little fly down, and maybe you wouldn't want to hear what, what that was said, but uh, certainly Cougars with their work cut out because, yeah, 37-10 loss here at home today. Now you go to Indiana Wesley and, and play the team that upset Marion last week and beat them down at Indianapolis 17-10. to You've got to play better next week if you've got going to have a chance. We'll take another com, uh, timeout. We'll be back with some uh, either some scores, maybe some stats. We'll see what we get. But first, we'll step out for this for Shelter Insurance. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. In Northeast Indiana, contact Brendan Scott Shelter Insurance at 342 Enterprise Drive, Warsaw, Indiana, or call 574-376-4448. Learning to manage your finances. Learning to manage your finances, maybe not a lot of fun, but what if you actually got paid to learn? Public Service Credit Union has partnered with Zogo, the gamified financial literacy app that lets you earn while you learn. With real-life rewards like gift cards to your favorite stores, bite-sized modules tackle topics like saving for retirement, buying a car, even opening a checking account, lessons that are fun for students and even parents. Get started by downloading the Zogo app. Use access code MYPSCU. Finally, it pays to learn about finances thanks to Public Service Credit Union. Playing competitive football in Fort Wayne requires focus, determination, teamwork, and buying into a system. That worked well for Brian Kurtz and Matt Milhouse when they played together at Bishop Bloors and again at the University of St. Francis. And now those two stalwart athletes continue to display those winning characteristics learned on the gridiron at their new business, Kurtz Mio Concrete Solutions. These days, it's less about football and more about finding the most cost-effective concrete and power washing solutions to meet your needs. Join the winning team at Kurtz Mio when it comes to financial planning, most financial companies focus on your income. With Landon Myers Northwestern Mutual Practice, the focus is on your outcome. Northwestern Mutual knows what it takes to succeed, both on your balance sheet and in your life. It takes just the right financial partner who looks at where you are now and where you want to go, then designs a financial plan to get you there, so you can achieve the life you're after today and every day. Focus on your financial outcome with Landon Myers and Northwestern Mutual. Call Landon at 260-318-2132. Let's see how our team can best benefit your team. Northwestern Mutual is the marketing name for Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, NM, and its subsidiaries in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Landon Myers is an insurance agent of NM. For additional information, please visit landonmyers.nm.com. You're listening to USF Football on WGO. News Radio 1250 and 105.5. Fans gathering on the field and uh, talking about what went wrong here in the second half for St. Francis. And, and Bill, you know, the, the end and the short out of it, it's been feast or famine all season long for St. Francis. They lose today, and that's pivotal because they're now 3-3, three and three, and effectively uh, they will be out of uh, the, the race to move on potentially 
uh, as far as postseason play, they drop also to one and two in the Mideast League. But that third loss is critical uh, as far as the overall rankings that may ultimately come about. With the Marion Knights, they uh, stay alive in the Mideast East, uh, League East late League race. They are now three and one, but overall take the record to five and one. And uh, they will head to Ann Arbor next Saturday to take on Concordia University. As we mentioned, the road does not get any easier for St. Francis. And, and I think when you look at it, the question you've got, can they be better than last year's 3-6 and six team? I think the answer is a definitive yes. But you've got to play. You've got to prove it on the field. And it won't be easy next week in uh, Indiana Wesleyan t- Territory in Marion. In fact, three of the final four games now for St. Francis are on the road. Uh, let's see if what you, you've got anything to update fans with. I can tell you that. With your microphone, Sorry works a lot that. better. Yeah, it works on <laughs> better down by your mouth. Uh, Indiana Wesleyan's taking a 21-7 lead at Lawrence Tech. That game is in the third quarter still. Uh, at Taylor, the Trojans have taken a 24-14 lead over Concordia. Wow, what has happened to the Cardinals? They were ranked in the top ten earlier this season. Yeah, those early rankings, you know, you never know. Uh, Sienna Heights uh, easily leads Madonna 38-19. to uh, Any other updates? How about Saint the Xavier's. Midwest? Yeah, St. Xavier's. St. Xavier's still leading Missouri Baptist 17-10. to And that looks like the only score from the Midwest. That uh, Check that. We got St. Francis, Illinois, 14 at Judson, 8. So those are the updates I've got right now. Um, That's oh, here's good. one more. Olivet okay. Nazarene at St. Ambrose. Olivet Nazarene leads 20-7. to 7. Yeah, St. Ambrose was one of those 2-0 and o teams in the Midwest League, so they've got to, their job is to try to come back. Here today, the news not good. Cougars, they just uh, fold up in the second half, and they fall here at home to Marion University by a final score of 37-10. On to Marion next uh, Saturday after Marion, Indiana. They'll take on Indiana Wesleyan. Hope to see you there in person if you can. And if you can't, join us on WGL, our pregame show with a 12 noon kickoff begins at 11.45. For Bill Scott, I'm Joe Parson. So long, everybody. Thanks for very much for listening. You've been listening to Cougar Football.